I played 234 days of Stardew Valley, but I used the Marigo mod and have attained perfection. Hello everybody, this is Gamergar. Welcome back to another Stardew Valley video. For this video, I bring to you the 100 days, 200 days and the finale to make the mega Marigo movie. Marigo stands for modular gameplay overhaul and it is a complete and comprehensive rework of Stardew Valley gameplay mechanics. If you like 100 day style videos, check out my previous works. I have tons of 100 style videos on my channel. Make sure to like and subscribe, it helps me out a ton. Let's jump straight into the action. It is day number one on our Four Corners farm and we start by whacking some weeds, cutting down some trees and we're going to make our usual chest to store all items in that we don't need at the moment. Once the chest has been placed, we're going to run around the entirety of the map and try to collect as many forageables as possible. But before we do that, we're going to hold the ground up and plant our free 15 parsnip seeds before we proceed. Once all of the forageables have been collected, we more or less spend the rest of the day just mining and cutting down trees on the farm. We're also going to visit the beach to see if we can get any sort of artifacts that we can give into Gunther for a handy 250 gold. You might remember in the last video challenge that we did, there was one artifact that I could not get for the life of me to complete all of the artifacts found in the game, and that was, you guessed it, the Trilobite. Well, guess what? The first artifact we found in this challenge was, in fact, the Trilobite. I feel like the game just likes to tease me sometimes. But we handed that in. That was 250 gold. That's extra money to buy some more crops off Pierre. And we're going to start with buying some kale. Kale is great crop for growing and for selling. It's also very nice for energy as well. But we're not going to be using it for energy. We just want money at the moment. So I got some skill ups today. Mining and foraging. I can now make wild seeds for spring. Which is really nice. So I'm going to plant those in the ground. We are going for tea saplings after all. We get the fishing rod off Willy. We're going to pull up some fish. The whole day is spent fishing. And look what we got. Super lucky a broken trident. Because of the Marigold mod it has been reworked. It is now a much more powerful weapon. It does come with a drawback though. Minus 10% resistance. That means we're more than likely to get debuffs from enemies if we are attacked. The next day, I'm going to get the fiberglass rod off Willy, going to get some trout soup, and we are going catfish hunting. The more catfish we can get, the more money we're going to get. Level 5 fishing, the Marigold mod has reworked all professions in the game. Trapper now is crab pots are cheaper to craft, but also can trap higher quality fish. But we're going to take fisher. Bait is double the effectiveness as what it used to be. That means using regular bait and wild bait, we're going to be able to get fish much faster. So I'm going to sell all this fish to Willy now instead of putting it in the shipping bin later. Reason for this, I just want to get a much larger backpack so I'm not throwing items away. I'm going to try to get this as early as possible and getting it on day number 4 was game changer for me. Day number 5, it is time to collect all of our lovely parsnips. I'm going to sell those of course along with the pink cake and the cookies because I want to make as much money as possible. Once all these items have been sold, I am going to purchase more seeds off Pierre, including a bean starter, because you guessed it, we're going the community center route in this video. We're not going to be going to Georgia route. I'm going to challenge myself and go the community center route. It is going to be much harder for me, but it's always good to mix it up every couple of videos. I put down loads of potatoes. They're going to sell for lots of money. The great thing about potatoes is that sometimes you can pull up an extra potato. That's extra money. I also fixed the bridge, got over to the tide pools, more forageables for me, more money. I'm going to complete the spring foraging bundle. The reward, 30 free spring seeds ready to go, ready to be planted. We're now going to make some progress in the mines. I do have the broken trident. The weapon is an absolute beast. Its secondary attack, the multi-hit, will one-shot more or less any enemy in the game, including most of the Skull Cavern enemies. That is how strong the broken trident actually is. As we can see, the starter slimes are no match for the weapon. So the great thing about the Margo mod is it reworks all of the chest rewards also. So I was expecting nether boots when I got floor 10, but instead I got 15 bombs. I was actually very happy with that. To get that amount of bombs early on was game changer. It was Mary Lewis's birthday today. I gave him a daffodil because he likes those. That's extra friendship points for him. We are going for perfection after all. I got rubber boots from killing an enemy. It's just plus one immunity, but it's better than nothing. Because of the Marigo mod, a lot more crates now have spawned in most of the levels in the mines. Crates are now very common, and when I see crates, I do destroy them. They're really good for hardwood also. 
Floor 30, I got some survival burgers. They're really good for foraging. But floor 40, I got two rain totems. To get those this early is a game changer. I can make it rain the next day, no problem, for a double rainy day. Because tomorrow is a natural rainy day. Down to floor 48, as we can see, the mid-tier enemies are no match for the broken trident. When I got to floor 50, I got two quantity sprinklers. I was over the moon with that. The sooner I can set my farm up with sprinklers, the better. It just means I don't have to do the god-awful task of watering crops every morning. And the more sprinklers I get, the more crops I can buy, the faster I can progress the game. So it was raining today, we're on day number 9 now. I activated my rain totem so tomorrow it would also rain. So I don't have to water crops for the next two days, which is great. I sighted up all of my lovely rice shoots. I'm going to sell all that unmilled rice. If I had a mill, I could have turned that into regular rice and made a profit. But I didn't have to mill right now. So I'm just going to sell the unmilled rice as it is. I got Clint to upgrade my pickaxe. So I can't go to the mines today. Instead, I'm just going to fish. And because it was raining, we might as well pull up as many catfish as possible. I also run around to collect more forageables so I can make more spring wild seeds. I also put up the eel because I need that for the fishing collection. I also need it for the community centre bundle for the fish tank. The next day it was time to pull up lovely potatoes. I also got a few items here from hoeing up the ground. I'm going to donate all these to Gunther. The great thing about the bone flute there is that the reward given back to you is a flute block. And you only need one flute block to complete the mermaid puzzle over on Ginger Island. The rest of the money was spent on parsnip seeds, it's a lot of parsnip seeds, but that means a lot of farming XP for me, and a nice profit. I also got my pickaxe back off Clint, and we're back to fishing again, we're getting more catfish. I also got an ancient seed from a fishing treasure chest that was very lucky to get one so early. Demetrius paid us a visit the next day, we have a choice between the mushroom cave and the bat cave. We're going to go with the bat cave because I find it a much easier cave to use when you're going to complete community centre bundles, primarily for the pomegranates and the apples. Clint is upgrading more tools for us again today, I want to get that steel pickaxe as quickly as possible, and the rest of the day was a bit fishing. So we're now on the 13th, lucky for some, unlucky for others, but it was a very lucky day for me, because I was able to buy so many lovely strawberry seeds, 243 in total. That's going to be a lot of money in the next couple of days, I also won the event of course. I think eventually Mary Lewis will just ban me from the event, otherwise nobody will just turn up if I keep winning. <laughs> it was raining again today, which was great, and the next day was also a rainy day, so I was just blessed with rainy days for this challenge. It happens sometimes, you just get a huge consecutive chain of rainy days. We're gifting Caroline daffodils in the hopes to get her up to two hearts as quickly as possible. Once she gets two hearts, she will give us the tea sap and recipe, and then we're going to see some serious cash rolling into the old farm. I got the master slingshot on floor 60. I will only use that once to get a golden walnut if I can reach Ginger Island later on. It is much more difficult for me to reach Ginger Island early when I go the community centre route. If I went to Georgia route, I'd more than likely be in there at the start of summer. But for now, we're going to go back into the mines and make some progression. At level 70, I got 5 warp totems to the farm. I wasn't too happy with that. I never really use warp totems to the farm because I normally just pass out. The trick is to just have no money on you. If you have loads of money, you should spend it, invest it straight away. You shouldn't keep huge amounts of money on you. And all of my money was in the ground, grown at this moment in time. So I could just push the caves until I passed out, woke up the next day with a very, very small penalty. It was time to complete more bundles. This time we're going to complete the spring crops bundle. The reward was 20 speed grows. I'll use those later on. I won't bother with the strawberries because it's too late now to get a third harvest. We're going to farm floor 81 here now, and it's a great floor for fibre. I also got dark boots. Plus 4 defence, plus 2 immunity. A fantastic upgrade for us. Much better than that of the thermal boots. We're making our way down. I want to get to floor 100 so I can get that lovely star drop. It's always nice to increase the maximum energy that your character can hold. It just means I can do more on a daily basis. When I got to floor 90, I wasn't expecting it. 14 gold bars. I was actually really happy with that. Because you need gold bars to make quality sprinklers and some other bits and bobs as well down the road. I got to level 100, got the star drop, nice one. All that was left, primarily, was just a skull key on level 120. Level 5 farming, we could take rancher, be for an animal twice as quickly, or harvester. 10% chance to get an extra crop when we pull it up out of the ground. We went with harvester. For mining, I'm going to go with blaster. Craft twice as many explosives and exploded rocks yield double the coal. That is absolutely amazing. 
And this is the great thing about the Marigold mod. I went into the mod totally blind, so I just didn't know what to expect when it comes to the perks or any of the gameplay mechanics. For the combat, I'm going to go with Fighter, damage plus 10% and plus 15 HP. Rascal was pretty cool, but I don't really use a slingshot, so it was a bit of a waste for me. Fighter all the way. The next day, it was time to collect my iron bars and pick up all of the forgers on my farm. I then decided to complete all of the boiler room bundles. I had all of the items needed, I'm doing the mines all the time, so that was an easy first room completion done. That unlocks the traveling carts. I also completed the crab pot bundle because I managed to get all of the items on the beach and I got the crabs from slain monsters in the mines. So I went to Marilyn today and I had loads of items that I couldn't sell via the shipping bin. So I just sold to Marilyn directly to get some extra cash. So I'm using a cudgel here just to try it out because it was a club weapon, but I didn't like the move set that the Margomad set on this weapon. So I end up swapping back to the broken trident later on. When I got to floor 110, I got 12 more gold bars. I was over the moon with that. It just meant that once I got level 6 farming, I could just focus on iron bars and refined quartz to make tons of quality sprinklers without wasting resources. It was raining today, so we're pulling up more fish. I want to get to fishing level 10 before spring is finished, so I can have a go at the legend fish. If I want to collect all the fish in the game by year 1, I need to get the legend in spring. If I don't get the legend in spring, then I have to wait until year 2. So Caroline just taught me the tea sapling recipe there, but she will officially send it to me in the mail the next day. I also gave Robin her last axe, and the rest of the day I spent cutting down trees to increase my foraging skill. I got it to 5 there, so I get to choose new perks. We had Lumberjack, 25% more wood, or Forager, a 20% chance for double yield of foraged items. We're going to go with Forager because I'm focusing on tea saplings at the moment. Speak of the devil, just got the tea sapling recipe there. And I'm going to use up all my resources now to make as many tea saplings as possible. 71 in total, that's more or less 35,000 gold in the bag. I'm going to get the deluxe backpack. That means all my inventory slots are now unlocked. I sold tea saplings, that's up to 49,000 gold. We're going to go straight into the vault here and unlock all these bundles so we can now get the bus over to the desert and start doing Skull Cavern runs. The sooner we can get started with Skull Cavern, the sooner we can get our hands on Iridium and make loads of money and upgrade the tools. The big prize there with the vault is the Crystallarium. You just get one, but it's better than nothing that I can put a jade into that and start accumulating staircases. We're also going to get a pickaxe upgrade. I couldn't afford it, so I had to sell some gold bars. Not to worry, I had plenty. I sold enough to get 10,000 gold. Then I got Clint to upgrade my pickaxe to a gold one. That would take a couple of days. I got a quest off Marnie for an emerald. I obliged because it was a profit for me and it was extra venture points. I also gave her a quartz because she likes those as well. I didn't have really have any loved gifts. She loves diamonds, but I didn't want to give her a diamond because I needed those for triple shot expressos. The rest of the day I spent fishing. I got the sunfish there and I actually needed that for the fishing collection. Not the shell was handy. But look what I got here when I pulled up a largemouth bass. I got a treasure chest. This is extremely rare. It's as rare as getting a prismatic shard or a dinosaur egg or an ancient seed. It's worth 5,000 gold if you sell it. The funny thing about a treasure chest is that if you try to gift it to someone, they absolutely hate it. So if you ever get a treasure chest down the road, do not gift it. Just sell it do yourself a favour. I finally got level 10 fishing. The perks are very interesting here. Angler, fish are 0.5% more valuable for every unique species caught. Fully extending the tackle causes its effects to linger on the fishing rod. That's really cool. Then we had a queryist. Fish pond max capacity plus two, that means more rewards. Catching bar decrease slower for every unique fish species raised in a fish pond. So if you want to get those perfect catches on a super hard fish, just make a fish pond for every single fish in the game. <laughs> and you'll have no problem doing that. Really cool perks there. I was very happy with those. Um, the Marigo mod is just so cool. The strawberries have finally grown. We're going to get all those. I'm also going to get the Iridium rod. And I'm going to get the Trap Bobber and some bait. We're going to go for the Legend now today because it was raining. You can only get the Legend on rainy days. That is the Legend cut. It took me three attempts. It was quite the battle now. Extremely hard fish to catch. One of the hardest fish in the game. I got the gold pickaxe off Clint. It's time to upgrade more tools. This time we're going to go with the axe. We're going to upgrade that to a copper axe. We're going to go back into the mines now. I got a diamond there from a mystery note. That's really nice. I'm going to make some quality sprinklers today. They're going to make my life way easier. 
I'm gonna sell more items to Marilyn just to make more money. There's no point having those in my chest because they're using up space. I'm gonna make a fish pond here now and I'm gonna put a fish inside that in the next couple of days. I'm doing a skull cavern run today, but it's not a full skull cavern run. I didn't come in here until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I just went in to wet my feet a bit and get some minerals. I come out then later on and I trade in some items for Chubba Shot Expressos and Spicy Eels. But the next day, we're going to do a full run for real. I picked up an Iridium Band, but it doesn't have any stats on it. It's worth a thousand gold. The Marigold mod changed the way the Iridium Band worked. And at that moment in time, I did not have a clue of the mechanics of it. So I end up selling it later. And I regret that so much. So, so much. Because it turns out that it was one of the best rings in the game. But I'll talk more about it later. I went to the flower dance festival today. I picked up the rare crow. And I also picked up the top of flowers recipe. I need those to get perfection. I didn't have enough friendship points accumulated with any of the lovely straws to dance with them. So I just watched in the background. I was probably better off anyway, because if I got really drunk, there would have been a good chance that I would have attempted to use one of the straws as a tool to slurp down a drink. Moving on, I got 10,000 gold off Mr. Key for making a pass for 25 in the mines. Thank you very much, Mr. Key. I also got my lovely copper axe, and we have iron bars smelting back in the farm too at the moment, so we're doing really well. I got Clint to upgrade my pickaxe to an iridium pickaxe. That's going to make a skull cavern life much easier. As we can see here now, I have tons of weapons to sell. Templar's blades and wicked crisses are very common. Because there were so many crates in Skull Cavern and those weapons were just popping out of the crates left, right and centre. I went to the Skull Cavern with a prismatic shard. It didn't work, so I googled it to find out why. And then I read that you have to have a prismatic shard plus 10 iridium bars to get a galaxy weapon. I was hoping for a galaxy sword or a galaxy hammer. But instead, I got a galaxy dagger. I was very disappointed with this. I was going to reset the day and try again, but I didn't bother. I said, you know what? I'm pretty good with most weapon types. I might as well just keep the dagger and see how we get on. And I regret that later. I went to Marilyn to see if he had the other galaxy weapons for sale because I got the dagger. He didn't. I was stuck with the dagger. <laughs> so I went to check out the traveling cart merchant. Picked up a jelly for the community center bundles. Also picked up a rare seat as well. Not too bad. I went back to the desert with 20 iridium bars and a prismatic shard in the hopes that the pylons here would activate and grace me with another galaxy weapon. But no, they were finished with me. I was absolutely stuck with this galaxy dagger. There was nothing I could do. I had to use it as my main combat weapon. I tried to put the legend into the fishing pond because the Marigomad stated you could do so, but it didn't work. So I put it back into the chest and I would investigate later to see if I could find a workaround for that. It was Pierre's birthday, so I gave him a daffodil to get some friendship points with him. I went into my bat cave. Lots of forageables, ready to be picked up. So I'm going to pick all these up now, and some can be used for community centre bundles. That was going to save me some time later on. The rest of the day was spent fishing. And I just fished primarily to get money, because I was going into summer and I wanted to buy lots of star fruit. I got coal here. It's nice to get stuff out of the fishing treasure chests. Coal is always a nice reward. Coal is something that I always run out of because I smell so many bears. I got back my Iridium pickaxe, super happy. I'm now going to give Clint my copper axe, he's going to upgrade that to a steel axe so I can get into the secret woods. I'm giving Gunther more artifacts here and minerals in the hopes to get access to the sewers so I can get access to Krobus as quickly as possible. There's also a statue down there that allows you to respec and the Marigomod has changed that dramatically, but we'll talk more about that later on when we get down into the sewers. So we were back to completing more community center bundles. The exotic forage bundle was easy enough because I had the coconut and the cactus fruit. The other items were simple to get. I picked up the autumn's bounties. I don't use the autumn's bounty. I just sell it to make money. I'm back down to floor 81. I'm farming this floor for the whole day for fiber to make more tea saplings. I made over 41,000 gold today, primarily from selling iridium bars and other bits and bobs I got from the mines. We're checking out the traveling cart merchant again today. I'm gonna pick up a rare seed. But the big prize today was an ancient seed going for 400 gold and a red cabbage going for a grand. I got those straight away. It was a magnificent day with the traveling carts. So we're going to visit Sandy today. It's the last day of spring. I'm going to get 293 starfruit seeds. Then I'm going to visit the regular mines and I'm going to get all of the exclusive fish in the mines. Such as the ghost fish, the stonefish, the ice pip on floor 60 and the super hard lava eel on floor 100. This fish is really rare 
so it does take quite a number of attempts to actually catch this and even if you do get a bite it's very hard to pull it up if you're not prepared i strongly recommend using a trap bobber to pull that fish up it is quite a challenge especially if you don't see it coming and it takes you by surprise so it's the first day of summer i got my steel axe off clint that means we can get into the secret woods i'm going to purchase a few crops off pierre for some of the community center bundles we're also going to go to Sandy and I'm going to spend loads of money on more starfruit seeds, 32 in total. The more starfruits I can grow, the more I can convert into starfruit wine, the more money I can make. Because I have the steel axe, I can now get rid of all these large stumps all around my farm. And I can start accumulating hardwood now. And loads of hardwood will be needed later on. I fished up the wood skip today, that was needed for the fishing collection. And I'm also going to do the summer foraging bundle. You only need three summer forageables for that bundle. You also only need three summer forageables to make summer wild seeds, which is also really good. So it's a lot easier to make tea saplings in summer. It's definitely the best month in the whole game to make tea saplings. I pulled up an octopus today. It was a very hard catch. Definitely one of the hardest, if not the hardest, not legendary fish in the game. I then got the crimson fish, and then in the evening time, we were fishing up super cucumbers. They sell for really nice money. We're going to visit Robin, and she is going to make us a silo, because I want to get some animals on the farm. We're then going to get Clint to break open some geodes for us, so we can give Gunther more minerals and artifacts, so we can try to get down into the source as quickly as possible. I made some crab pots, and I'm using these to get more fish for the fishing collection. If we catch all the fish in the game, Willie will give us a star job, and we need that for perfection. So I completed the lake fish bundle by getting a sturgeon there, that was really nice. The reward was a dressed spinner. I'm just going to sell that for 500 gold. I also completed the artisan bundle. The reward there was a cake. That's a very nice reward indeed. You can't have enough eggs in my opinion. I went back into the secret woods today because I want to get more hardwood. But it's also a great place to get foraging XP. I finally got foraging level 7. That means I can make 3 fertilizers. I can now make 3 farms. And I also give a fire quartz into the lava eels here to make them feel more at home. They will also multiply. The more lab eels I get in that fish pond, the better rewards I get. Amazing items here to be had from the travelling cart. I picked up the truffle, which means I don't have to get pigs anymore. And I also picked up the duck egg. I still need a duck though, for the duck feather. I also met some lightning rods, because I was going to get the thunder and lightning very soon, because it was summer. So the lightning rod is a great way to get battery packs. They come in super handy later, especially to get access to Ginger Island. Because it was raining today, I fished up the red snapper. That's needed for the ocean fish bundle. And I just completed that there. The reward was five warp totems to the beach. The next day I was able to get some battery packs. Super happy with that. We're going to visit Robin now. She is going to make us a coop. And we're going to get a barn the next day. And we're probably going to get one of each animal. Just to cover all of the items in the game. I fished up a sturgeon. Then it was off to the desert. Pick up some more forages. I also fished up the scorpion carp and the sandfish while I was in the desert. I needed the sandfish for another fish bundle. And that was another one out of the way. Very close now to completing the, the fishing community centre bundles. Back into the mines, I'm farming copper because I need to make tons of tappers for the tree seeds that I planted down at the farm. I want to get loads of oak presses to make kegs later on so I can make starfruit wine. I'm clearing up space now on the farm. It's the Four Corners farm. So there's four big areas on the farm that I can clear out to put crops down or to put other stuff down. 51 tappers made. I put those in all my trees. The rest of the day was spent farming up wood. It was Gus's birthday today, so I gave him a diamond. I did have loads of those from the Biscuit Cavern run. That put him up to two hearts. Robin usually does not work on a Tuesday, but if you talk to her just at the right moment, you can actually access her interface. You can get her to upgrade your house, buy supplies, or even get her to make a building on your farm, even on Tuesdays. You just gotta do it at the right time, just before she leaves the house. So I'm gonna put all my tappers on my trees, and all of my lovely spring forages are now ready. I'm just going to collect all these. I'm going to make more. I'm going to replant them. And any excess summer seeds I have will be used to make tea saplings. Just like this. Look at all the tea saplings I'm going to make right now. 99 in total. That's almost 50,000 gold. I'm going to get back from those. It's a huge amount of money. I got the lobster out of a crab pot today. I was super happy with that. One step closer to catching all the fish in the game. It was Maru's birthday, so I gave her the battery pack, because she loves batteries. Some more friendship points for me. Speaking of friendship points, I put a gold star sturgeon into the luau. 
that gets the best response from the governor because he loves the soup and I get tons of friendship points. Back to Robin, I'm going to get the brick floor recipe from her and I'm also going to get a barn as well so she'll have that made in a couple of days. I'm going to put the floor all around my tappers. It just makes it way easier to collect the resins going forward so that pops up in between the trees. I'm doing a skull cavern run today and I'm making loads of bombs here now because I have the perk where I can make you know, two bombs for just the resources of one bomb. It's really easy to make tons of bombs using the iron ores and the coal. At the end of the day, I got level 10 mining. Because of the Marigold mod, the perks drastically changed. The first one was the demo perk, bomb radius plus one. But exploded rocks yield 20% more resources. That was really nice. Other one was the gemologist. Progressively identify minerals of higher quality. That means I can get like iridium or gold star diamonds, for example. Crystal arms work faster. I went with the demo perk because I wanted to see how effective bomb farming could be. I also got a dinosaur egg and I put that into the incubator in the coop. That get me back a dinosaur and any future eggs that dinosaur lays I can just give it to Gunther, turn the rest into mayonnaise. I'm going to buy more starfruit seeds now today, 208 in total, and I'm going to smelt all of my lovely iridium ores into iridium bars and sell those for even more money. I'm very close now to getting access to the sores, so it's just one or two last big pushes we're going to get Clint to break open geodes. We're going to give him into Gunther. I'm also studying more weapons here I got from Scott Cavern Run into Marlin. Marlin must be having a field day here with all these weapons. I also checked out the travelling car today. The fried egg was very nice indeed. But it doesn't stop there. We got super lucky. We scrolled down a few pages and the large goat milk was also there. It just meant I didn't have to invest in a goat if I didn't want to. I also got the Mackey Roll recipe off Gus. That is needed for another community centre bundle and it's very easy to make the Mackey roll. I also purchased the other recipes that he had too, bar the Shubbershot Espresso, because I didn't want to waste the rest of my money on that just now. With the resources I had, I made 10 crystallariums, I put those down on the farm, and I finally got level 10 farming. Artisan was now overhauled to all artisan machines for 10% faster. Machine output quality can be as good as input ingredient quality. That's interesting. I'm gonna go with agriculturist. Crops grow 10% faster, and there's a chance we can pull up a really quality crops from the ground without using fertilizer. That's a game changer right there. Gunther paid us a visit the next day. He finally gave me the key to the sores. I just put up a batch of melons here. But what's really interesting about this is that I got an iridium quality melon. And because it's higher than the gold star, I can also use that for quality crops bundle, for example, if I want. So I went to Robin and I'm going to get her to upgrade my house again. I'm also going to go to Clint and I'm going to upgrade a tool. I'm going to get the gold axe. And that eventually will go all the way to the Iridium axe where I can cut down trees very quickly. It was time to go back to the Statue of Prestige. We are going to rework another skill. So this statue will allow us to reset our skill. But we keep some of the perks from the skill originally. So I have a choice here between farming, fishing and mining. Now I didn't have enough gold on me at the moment. So I was going to have to wait and come back to that. But while I was down here, I did manage to pull up the mutant carp, which is another legendary fish, added to the roster. I'm going to make a little tree farm here now, and all of this will just be wood for tea saplings and building upgrades, things like that down the road. The great thing about the tree fertilizer is that I can make tree farms whenever I please, as long as I have the basic resources to do it. It just means trees will grow within a few days. It'll even work on trees in winter, which is amazing. As you can see here now, I'm collecting all my resins. I'm getting 2 XP per resin collected, thanks to the Marigold mod. That's really handy for getting up foraging skill. I'm also getting lots of starfruit wines here as well. I'm going to fill up all these kegs now with starfruit. And when I get back the wine, I'm going to make an absolute ton of money. I also got shades on my crystallariums. So come Sunday, I can swap those in for staircases. Got my gold axe back off Clinton now today. But we're not finished there. We're going to give him the axe straight back in and he will upgrade that to an iridium quality axe. That's what we're looking for. It's very handy that you can sell bars directly to Clint, especially if you need to upgrade tools but you can't afford it. Having iridium bars or gold bars or things like that can save you a lot of time and energy. So I'm making more tea saplings now today and we're back planting spring forageables on the ground. I'm going to sell all those tea saplings to make a ton of money. It was also Sam's birthday. So I gave him a pizza, I bought that from Gus, and Sam was super happy with that. Pizza is one of Sam's loved gifts. We're back in the mines, farming for 81 for the rest of the day. I'm at over 52,000 gold today, primarily from selling iridium bars and tea saplings. So I'm going to use a carp, some rice and seaweed to make a mackerel. I needed that for a community centre bundle. 
we're going to go back to Statue of Prestige and we are going to reset our mining skill because I want to accumulate more perks for mining. I heard the sound of the train so I went straight up to the bathhouse area in the hopes that I would get a really good item from the train. Sometimes you can drop very rare items and on this occasion it did. It dropped the leprechaun shoes. They are probably one of the coolest shoes in the game. Leprechauns are also linked to good luck in Ireland. So we do have a myth around Ireland where if you reach the bottom of a rainbow, you may find a leprechaun with a pot of gold. Leprechauns also jump up out of holes in Ireland. So if you're walking on the road or walking through a field, you gotta watch out that you don't accidentally step on a leprechaun. So just be careful if you ever visit Ireland. If you come across any of the leprechaun homes, try not to step on them. The leprechauns can get quite angry. It was Demetrius' birthday. Give him an ice cream. He was super happy with that. We're collecting more jades and now we are processing ancient fruit to try to get more. I got back mixed seeds today. That was very unpleasant, extremely unlucky, but we can't have good luck all of the time. So I just rolled with it. Went to the desert, cut down some trees here as well. I needed lots and lots of wood to make more tea saplings and I also wanted building upgrades. So once all these trees have been cut down, I'll be able to go back to Robin and I'll be able to start upgrading coops and barns, getting house upgrades and things like that. I treaded in my jades for staircases so I'm prepping myself now for another Skull Cavern run. It's always the start of a great day when you wake up to battery packs, gold, iridium bars and jades. Went back to Clint, got the copper hoe. I'm going to hand that back in now for a steel hoe upgrade. That's going to come in super handy for fall when we start putting down pumpkins. I met some iridium sprinklers today. I'm now getting the farm prepped for pumpkins because we're going to get hundreds and hundreds of those just in a few days. Got Robin to make the deluxe coop right there and now we're going to talk to Krobus and we're just going to get the star drop off him for 20,000 gold. That's one more star drop in the bag for us. So I went to the desert now today. And I'm going to get some Trup Shot Expressos, some spicy eels. We are going to do a Skull Cavern run. Today was a great day in the Skull Cavern. When I got to floor 20, I got two Iridium Sprinklers. They would go straight on the farm. When the day was finished, I got level 5 mining again. This time I selected plus 1 ore per vein. And it was even more battery packs the next day on the farm. The more battery packs I got, the more Crystallariums and iridium sprinklers I could make. I got my steel hoe off Clint. I stopped upgrades there. It was time to collect all of the lovely starfruit wine. I also completed the summer crops bundle. The reward for that was a quality sprinkler and I still had use for quality sprinklers. It was Willie's birthday, so I gave him a catfish. Willie just loves catfish. I could have given him a diamond, but I had a few catfish lying around from all the fishing I've been doing. So it just made more sense to give him one of those because I could still trade in diamonds for trip shot expressos and things like that. I purchased a full stack of wheat off Pierre today. That will be used for a placeholder. So when fall comes, I won't have to hoe or water the ground when I'm putting down the pumpkins. I can just scythe up the wheat because the wheat also grows in fall as well as summer. I made 46 more cakes today. That's more Stafford wine for us. And our dinosaur was finally born. That means any future eggs a dinosaur lays, we can just give them to Gunther. I went to Marnie, it was time to buy some supplies, so I bought some hay because I had no real grass on the farm so I couldn't cite it for hay at all. I also got an auto grabber, so I wouldn't have to worry about checking the dinosaur every day to see if it laid an egg and I also bought some rabbits and ducks as well. I got a large milk off the travelling cart along with a nautilus shell, I was extremely happy with those. And then I went back to my coop after purchasing all of the animals, I decided to pet them all. I didn't have an auto petter yet, but I do eventually get one by a Skull Cavern. I made loads of grass starter, planted that on the farm, and it was time to collect the last batch of star fruit. All of that would go into the cakes. I then replanted wheat on the ground so I wouldn't have to worry about re or rewatering the ground come fall when it comes to the pumpkins. And there was just a second batch of star fruit on the top left hand side of the farm as well. I was collecting iridium bars now today. They were gonna sell for lots of money. Then it was back to Robin, and this time I'm going to get her to make a mill. Because when I collect all of the wheat, I can turn that into wheat flour and I can turn that into bread to make a decent profit. I traded in more jets for staircases and we're finishing out summer in style with the lovely jelly event here. It's probably one of the greatest visual effect events in the game. So we're now in the first of fall, sighted up all of the wheat and I'm just purchasing crops off Pierre for community centre bundles. So I got the eggplant, the yam and I was getting pumpkins there as well. And the pumpkins will be the primary money maker for this season that will be converted into pumpkin juice i finished the fall foraging bundle the reward 30 fall seeds thank you very much it was then back into the back cave got a pomegranate there that was very lucky 
I just needed a couple of apples there now and that would be another community centre bundle completed. So I was at the mercy of RNG with this game. Apples are quite rare, but there is a chance if I pick up an apple I might get two and that would be great for me. Back down to the secret woods, we're collecting vegetables, breaking open trees and it's time to take on the community quests. We had the famous omelette and we had Juicy Bugs Wanted. We went with Juicy Bugs Wanted because it's easy to get bug meat. I gave Penny a sandfish for her birthday because she loves those and that pushed her straight up into the yellow for friendship which was great. It was then time to refill all of our lovely star fruit kegs. I also put all of the wheat into the mill here to get back wheat flour. That would just take one day to process which is really nice. The mill is actually a really really nice structure to have in the game. This time I was going for the big barn and after that we're going to go for the deluxe barn just so we can get one of each animal in the game which would cover more or less everything. I got my watering can upgraded and then it was back to fishing. So we were getting fish that we didn't get before such as the sea cucumber, the salmon, the midnight carp, all needed for the fishing collection. The next day it was time to get the lovely wheat flour from the mill. I converted that into bread straight away. 323 pieces of bread. That would be sold for a very nice profit indeed. It was then time to check the auto grabber and lo and behold there was lots of wool here that I needed for a community centre bundle. I also needed the rabbit's foot for the enchanter's bundle so it was a really nice haul today. We're then collecting all of our lovely oak resins that means I can make more kegs if I want to. It was time to finish off the enchanter's bundle. I had the oak resin and the rabbit's foot. That was another bundle completed there for the bulletin board. The reward was five gold bars. Not too bad. For the field research bundle it just needed the nautilus shell for that. The reward there was a recycling machine, that wasn't too shabby either. And for the dye bundle, I just needed a duck feather and a sea urchin. I'll get those eventually, because I did get a duck off Marnie. And I also completed the chef's bundle by just giving in a maple syrup. The reward there was a nice pink cake. So the big challenge here now is to get one more apple, so I'd have three apples in total for the fodder bundle. For the animal bundle, I gave in the milk and the wool, but I needed a chicken egg. I didn't actually have any chickens at the moment, so I had to sacrifice one animal in my coop and purchase a chicken off Marnie later on. For quality crops bundle, I had five ghost star corn. That was easy enough to do because I had the corn grown from summer. It was raining today, pulled up the walleye, so I'm getting much closer now to all of the fishing collections. It was finally time to finish off the lovely fishing bundles by giving in the tiger trout, and giving in the walleye, that was all of the bundles completed. A small glow ring and some bay. The prizes weren't great, but we needed to complete all of the bundles if you want to get to Ginger Island, so it was a necessary sacrifice. The plan was to get to Ginger Island by the end of fall or the start of winter, and then we could spend the whole season going through the island, getting the rewards that lie within, trying to access Key Secret Walnut Room, and just seeing how far the Margo mod has extended. But for now, we were back in the regular mines and we're just going for bugs here for bug meat. We needed 100 in total for Willy's quest. We had a whole week to complete it. The great thing about Willy's quest is that it also ties in with the monster eradication goals. And there's always a chance the bugs can drop ancient seeds. It is a small chance, but it will happen to you more often than not when you start farming those bugs. I gave in some mega bombs to the Laviels. I had to be super careful with those. We all know how I get with bombs sometimes. I was really worried that I would misplace the bomb and blow half the farm up because it was a mega bomb. <laughs> because it was Sunday, we're going back to the desert trader. We're trading in more jades for staircases. Now we're going back to Marlin and we're just getting rid of stuff here that we don't need. I got lots of rubber boots, lots of glow rings, items from the starter levels of the mines I didn't need. I also got the insect head and because of the Margo mod, it was actually upgraded a little bit. But the great thing about it that it was now worth 4,900 gold. So I sell it to Marlin for a really nice profit. I went to the travelling cart today, picked up the snowman rare crow. Rest of the day was spent cutting down trees because I needed a lot more wood to get a lot more upgrades done to the farm. I still hadn't reached level 10 foraging but I was getting there. And this huge haul of lovely fall forageables will certainly help with that. Especially if I get a double pull, get 14 XP instead of 7. With 340 fall wild seeds, I'll plant some of those back down in the ground and then with the rest I'll make tea saplings. I was going to sell all those lovely tea saplings. Met over 100 tea saplings today and the figures just keep going. 150 tea saplings in total. That's 75,000 gold. It was time for the legendary fall fish, the angler. It's a very easy catch. Probably one of the easiest legendary fish to catch in the game. Maybe besides the mutant carp. I never have any issues putting that angler fish out of the water. I then spent the rest of the day 
just getting berries off bushes. Made 185,000 gold today, primarily from tea saplings and crops and things like that. So I'm going to grab the duck feather and the egg. We're going to give one into the community center and the other into Gunther. So that was one more artifact to Gunther, one step closer to perfection. Got my copper watering can today off Clint, but we're not finished there. We're going to give the can straight back in, upgrade that to the steel watering can. That would come in super handy for Ginger Island. For the dye bundle, I had the duck feather and I had the sea urchin. That was the dye bundle complete and the reward was a seed maker. That's not too bad. We will be using lots of seed makers later for ancient fruit. It was then time to get our lovely starfruit wine all over again. And for the rest of the day, we were cutting down trees. I was really close to getting forging level 10 and I just popped right there. It's going to be very interesting to see what the perks are. I also got greeted by a fairy. So for the first perk, we got Ecologist. Wild berries restore 50% more health and energy, progressively identify forage in higher quality. And then we scavenger. And that just gives you the markers, but it has an additional perk. Occasionally detect buried treasure. And this really surprised me. It excited me. So I clicked on it to see what it was like. So I went back to Marnie today. And I almost purchased the rabbit. Then I said, no, I need a chicken. I need chicken eggs to complete the animal bundle. It was also Jodie's birthday. Give her a diamond. Jodie was happy. I'm also going to get another community quest. This time we're going to go with rock rejuvenation. Because I had so much minerals from the Skull Cavern runs. It was then back to the lovely Clint, got my steel watering can, but we weren't finished there, we might as well go all the way, so we're going to upgrade that to the gold watering can. That would take a couple of days. We were then back into the pantry, it was time to complete the fall crops bundle. That was one more bundle done, one to go. The reward was a bee house, not too bad. I gave Emily all of the minerals she wanted for rock rejuvenation, that was a thousand gold in the bag, and she sent me on a sewing machine the next day. It was time for the first batch of pumpkins. Look at the lovely giant mutated pumpkins. They were huge. I was thinking about destroying them, but I said no, I'm gonna leave them the way they are because they looked big and beautiful. And they even last throughout all of the seasons. So they look really cool in winter as well. So I'm going to leave the mutated pumpkins and just pick up the rest. For a good portion of today, it was just replanting the pumpkin seeds. So this was the first buried treasure. This was a level 10 foraging perk and I got four pieces of stone and I got one wild seed for the fall. It was it was so disappointing. I gave Abigail an amethyst because it was her birthday. More friendship points with her. So we're actually doing pretty well with the friendship in this game. I don't know if I'll be able to maximize everyone's friendship by the end of the year though. We'll find out soon enough. So it was back to Robin and Deluxe Baron all the way. Then it was back to Clint to get the gold watering can. Now I had a lot of money on me and had a resources. So I said, you know what? Let's just upgrade it to the Iridium watering can. It was raining today and the lovely vegetables were ready to be collected. I was going to pick up all those, plant some back down on the ground, turn the rest into tea saplings, the usual story. It was Sunday, that means staircases. It was then back to the travelling carts and she was selling pale ale for a thousand gold a pop. I purchased one just so I can complete the quest for Pam. Pam is looking for the pale ale. Give me that, slurp. Ah, that's the stuff. <laughs> Pam is just so funny. And of course, she's going to drive the bus after it. So for the next set of community quests, we're going to go with a curious substance. Need to get an ectoplasm. So we need to destroy ghosts for that. I spent the whole day locating ghosts and killing them in the hopes to get an ectoplasm. It's quite rare. It was time for the Stardew Valley Fair. I got first place, of course. I had a huge array of really nice items. Gambled all my star tokens on green. And once I had enough star tokens accumulated, I decided then to just use them all up and get the star drop and to get the rare crow in this event. They're the two most important items you need when you're going for perfection. So the rare crow was 800. The reason why you need all the rare crows is because when you get them all, you will be mailed a recipe called the Deluxe Scarecrow and you need to make that in order to achieve perfection. The starfruit wine was ready again and it's so nice just picking up all this lovely starfruit wine. I mean, the money was going to be amazing. I was killing doggies today and rock crabs and anything in between. I was just trying to complete more monster eradication goals for perfection. On floor 16, it was an ambush floor. This was amazing because I could just elevate her down to floor 15, pop a staircase or mine open a few rocks, get down to floor 16 and rinse and repeat for the day. It was Marnie's birthday, give her the diamond. That got enough friendship points with her for me to go in and get Mary Lewis's lucky purple shorts. And I was just going to give these back to Mary Lewis for friendship points because I want to accumulate as many friendship points as possible. <laughs> Bear Lewis had no idea how his shorts could have got there. Maybe Marnie stole them. 
Maybe Marnie gets a thrill out of wrapping people's underwear and bringing them back to her bedroom. Who knows? It was time to complete another quest. I gave the wizard the ectoplasm. He was very happy with that. He gave me 2,500 gold. I feel like you should get a lot more gold for that quest because the ectoplasm is so rare. I got the iridium water and kind of clint. Give back in the hole to upgrade that to a gold hole. We're back down on floor 81, farming it for the day. The next day, the wizard, as a reward for completing his quest, gave me the recipe to make mini obelisks. They're very handy for big farms because they allow you to warp around the farm at your own pace. So it's a very nice item to make. It's time to make more tea saplings. Let's see how many I can make today. 160 tea saplings. That's a lot of tea saplings. That's a lot of money. It was time to sell all of the weapons, armor and rings I didn't need to marry for extra money. I also finally got my sweet gem berry to take fruition. Gave that into the statue here in the secret woods and the reward was another star job for me. So I sold my sweet gem berries. What's interesting here is the iridium quality one. It sells for a whopping 6,000 gold. That is a very nice profit for sweet gem berries. Back to Clint. Got my gold hoe. I'm going to give that strap back into him and I'm just going to upgrade that to the iridium hoe. And that means all my tools are now of iridium quality, except the trash can, of course, but I don't really use the trash can anyway. Might upgrade it down the road. So I'm going to buy a spaghetti off Gus today. I also got the Chubba Shot Espresso recipe. And it's Robin's birthday. She loves spaghetti. So I'm going to give Robin a spaghetti. Robin also loves peaches, but I didn't have any peaches on me at the moment, so Robin would just have to settle with a spaghetti. But I would have got the same friendship points regardless, unless the peach, of course, was a silver gold or iridium quality. So that was another Monster Slayer goal done for the Duggies. One step closer to perfection. The Lava Eels wanted an Iridium Bar, so I turned it into the fishing pool. And that fishing pool is actually coming along very well now at the moment. It was time for another community quest. We had Community Cleanup, our fragments of the past. I went with Community Cleanup straight away. Those fiber seeds are just overpowered as hell. Way too good to pass up. So I went up to the Bathouse area. I spent a whole day fishing up there for trash. Once I accumulated 20 pieces, I put them all into the bin the next day to complete Linus's quest. The 500 gold is a small amount of money, but the real reward will come the next day when he gives me the recipe for the fiber seed. I got my iridium hoe back off Clint. It was then time to harvest all of the lovely starfruit wine. That's going to mean a lot more money for us. We're now running a little bit low on starfruit. I did have over 300 but that's going to go very quickly and eventually it's going to be back to processing pumpkins. They're not half as good as starfruit wine, but they're better than nothing. It was now the 24th of fall and this was going to be the last batch of pumpkins that we were going to pick up. So we were now heading into winter. I did get a few more mutated pumpkins though, thanks to the iridium quality sprinklers. So I'm going to leave all those pumpkins on the farm. It's also George's birthday and I actually had a leak lying around the place from spring so I gave him that because I knew he loves leaks so I kept one for him. I then decided to make lots and lots of fibre seeds. Now these don't actually need to be watered but I was just too lazy to pickaxe up all of the sprinklers so I just put them on the ground as is. I had the space for it. You do have to protect them though because the crows will swoop down and try to eat them. It was Thursday so I treaded in some prismatic shards for a magic rock candy. Probably one of the best if not the best consumable in the game. For the rest of the day then I was farming skeletons because I wanted to kill enough of these to get a monster eradication goal done and after one day I managed to do just that. I was getting quite used to using the dagger weapon. I still would have much preferred a sword or a club but I was getting used to it. I was getting a bit better with it. I purchased another ancient seed off the traveling cart. I also picked up Queen of the Gem Sea since it was a very rare painting. Why not? I had the money for it. And it was finally time to finish off the fodder bundle by putting in the last apple there. As a reward, I got back a heater. Not too bad at all. I also put in the chicken egg, finished off the animal bundle, and that was the pantry fully completed. I could now access the quarry cave. And what fun are we going to have inside the quarry? It was time to get Clint to process some geodes now today. So that's more minerals were given to Gunther. And I almost have all of the minerals done. I just needed a few more bits and bobs. It was time for another Skull Cavern run. So I took the Magic Rock Candy, took a Shubbershot Espresso, and it was time to break open some crates. Could I get another lucky ring today? Let's find out. Because we all know how lucky I get when it comes to getting lucky rings out of barrels. And there we go. <laughs> it was another lucky ring. 
They say lucky rings are insanely rare. They are rare, but they're not insanely rare because I manage to get at least one every time I do a challenge. You know, if you keep going into Skull Cavern over and over again and you keep prioritizing the bars and the crates, you are going to get one eventually. Level 10 mining, let's look at the prospector. Locations of ladders and mining nodes revealed occasionally detect rocks with valuable minerals. Then we had Spelunker, this is the one we're going to take. Chance to find ladders and shafts increase every mine level. Speed increases every five levels. That is absolutely insane. If we use that in combination with staircases in a skull cavern, we're going to have a super fast, super lucky character. We'll be able to get down to the bottom of skull cavern with ease. So I was very excited to try to do it as quickly as possible. So it was now the first of winter. Look at all the fiber we're going to get here from the fiber seeds. The mutated pumpkins also look amazing in winter. When we're finished with farming all of the lovely fiber, we're going to go up here now and play hide and seek with Krobus. He's going to give us the magnifying glass and that means we can now find secret notes from doing various activities around the game. And some of those notes are very powerful. What I was really hoping for was a secret note that would allow me to go to level 100 in the Skull Cavern and get that lovely Iridium juice that gives me more HP. So I'm going to take Robin's project today, I'm going to find some hardwood. I'm also going to complete the Winter Foraging Bundle. I finally got the Crocus there and the Snow Yam. The reward was Winter Seeds. And that was the Community Center completed. I could now access Ginger Island. But before I could access Ginger Island, I needed just a few more pieces of hardwood because I wasn't farming the hardwood as much as I normally do. And I wasn't really getting out of hardwood out of the crates in the mines, which is unfortunate. I also went for the Glacier Fish today probably one of the hardest fish to catch in the game. It took me a few attempts, I finally caught it. It was then time to get the lovely Heroes Trophy from completing the community center. It does not compare to the reward you get when you go to Georgia route, but it was still nice to get some recognition. It was now time to go into the quarry as well, because I wanted to get that lovely gold in sight. All these floaty skull enemies have a chance of dropping magic rock candies, of course. It is very low, and it's been a long, long time so I actually got one to drop a magic rock candy. But when I went up to the statue, I got the gold inside, but because we're using the Margo mod, something happened afterwards. When I clicked on the statue to teleport out, it said there's something behind the statue. You feel a sinister chill run down your spine. Whatever it is, you should probably leave it alone. I, of course, decided not to leave it alone and grabbed it. I picked up a weapon here called the Blade of Ruin. You reach out and discover an old looking sword. As you grab it, the blade begins to glow a sickly green color. Suddenly you feel as if all the peace and everything else drained from your body. Similar to like a Dementor from Harry Potter, you know, it just drains the life out of everything. So I equipped it straight away. I was very curious about this weapon. Little did I know at the time that every time I swung this weapon, it consumed some of my HP. And this weapon becomes an extreme hindrance later on in the video. It really is a double-edged sword. So it was time to fix up the boat to get to Ginger Island. I just needed some battery packs, iridium bars, and some hardwood. I could now go to Ginger Island the next day. It was Linus's birthday. Gave him a cactus fruit. Even people like Linus can't stay in the tent all year round. Sometimes you do have to go in for a bit of heat. Thank God for the bad house. The Blade of Ruin was a very nice weapon indeed. Its secondary function, a dash attack, could fly through enemies and it could kill a lot of enemies in one hit. Every time you slay five enemies with this blade, the stats on the weapon would increase. It will get stronger and stronger and eventually it'll get to a point where it'll start one-shotting enemies. The only drawback is that while this weapon is equipped, I felt that my defense stat didn't really matter. Enemies were hitting me for maximum damage. Every time I swung the blade and sometimes even if I just had the blade in my hand, I would lose HP and this would get worse as the weapon gets stronger. So it really is a double-edged sword. Went to Ginger Island though, and it was time to collect some golden walnuts. I just wanted enough to unlock the house, so I could start putting some crops down on the farm and stuff like that. I really wanted to get at the forge though, start upgrading my equipment, and I really wanted to get access to Key's secret walnut room to see what kind of quests he had. Now I was in the last season, it was winter, so it's gonna be difficult to see how much progress I can actually make. So I got the house built, I now had access to the farm here, I could also sleep over. When I went into the volcano for the first chest reward you always get the golden walnut. And you always get a free prismatic shard too when you get to the top. I enchanted my lovely blade of ruin. The enchant was called 
Wapajack. This enchant is hilarious. Basically, when you hit an enemy with this weapon, there's a chance you could outright kill them, you could turn them into an animal, you could turn them into a different enemy. It had so many different hilarious effects. There was also a chance that when you killed an enemy with Wapajack, they would drop a totally random item. And wait until you see the randomness of the items they get in the next few days. It was a total game changer. A really fun enchant to have. I was very impressed with this. And I'm actually very impressed with the Marigo mod. Fair play to the developers that made such a magnificent mod. So it was back to grinding out the Golden Walnuts in Ginger Island. I'd just done the pylon puzzle there, as you can saw. That took me almost a whole day. Got a clam there for killing a slime. And I turned two others into chickens. <laughs> one regular chicken, another a white chicken. And I think that one was a golden chicken. <laughs> so the only one I didn't have was the brown and the blue chicken. And this is just the start of it. This enchant is absolutely insane. It was time to pull up the fish I needed for the fishing collection. Got the line fish there today. And the first batch of winter forageables were now ready. So I'm going to pick all them up, make more, put them back down on the ground. This method will just rinse and repeat itself. I got a green tea, gave it to Caroline. She was very happy with that. And you can get tea leaves from Caroline's sunroom at the end of each season. So I managed to pick up a few free ones. I also finished off Robin's project by putting in some hardwood. That was the request completed. And it was time to collect our lovely starfruit from the cakes. The next day we had the winter event here, the fishing event, so I purchased another snowman rare crow. I forgot I already purchased one, so I now have two of those instead of one. I won the fishing event, and Lewis gave me the usual prize of the magnet, barbed hook, dress spinner and sailor's cap. I sell all the tackles and I put the cap into a chest. I'm not a huge fan of the sailor's cap. I made over 200,000 gold from selling items, primarily starfruit wine. It was then time to take on a quest, I'm going to go with Gus's famous omelette. Because I had lots of duck eggs now and chicken eggs at this stage, so this was a super easy quest to complete. So that was done in a matter of in-game hours. The reward was 3,000 gold, thank you very much Gus. It was then time to give Linus his birdie basket. Not much good to him in winter, but I just wanted to get more friendship points up with people. Gave Emily an amethyst, said it was from Clint. She took it up the wrong way and I got a nice kiss off Emily. <laughs> I also gave Willie a squid because he wanted me to fish one up. And I gave Caroline a pumpkin. She wanted one back in the fall, but she can always use it next year because crops in Stardew Valley are magical. They don't expire. Went into the sores and I got the dark talisman here because I wanted to get the ball rolling with the wizard's terminal. Fished up a void salmon needed for the fishing collection for Willy and I also got the void mayonnaise. We're going to give that to the henchman here. And he looks so cute in his straw form. Just look at his cute spiky helmet. He's such a cute, lovely henchman. <laughs> this got me access to the witch's house, and I was able to get the magical ink that I can now give to the wizard, which activates his magical terminal. When I went to the wizard, I got a new scene, thanks to the Marigold mod. The wizard taught me about the strange sword that I wielded, and he gave me the background on the sword, and he taught me it once belonged to a legendary hero, but that hero's heart was broken, and the sword turned evil. But he taught me that there is a chance I can turn the sword holy again by doing a huge string of quests. So the NPC that had the sword, his name was Vigo. And to be honest with you, I had to actually Google how to progress the quest because I didn't really know what to do. Before I Googled it though, I did go into a lot of places to see if I could progress but nothing was happening. Eventually I ended up going to the statue of Yoba, like I do right here. I also gave Sebastian there as a shimmy for his birthday. So all the quests I had to do were prim primarily based on choices you get during the NPC cutscenes. So I needed to accumulate more friendship points with a lot of the NPCs to complete a lot of these quests. There was also a quest here to give freely and share your abundance with your fellow townsfolk. 500,000 gold. I suppose the best way to do that, maybe, is to get Robin to upgrade Pam's house, which costs 500,000 gold. I'm hoping that's the case. So I had a lot more staircases today, had a lot of bombs, had some mega bombs. And as you can see, my character is now super fast because I'm on floor 206 now. My character is like a bullet. The bombs have a much bigger radius. I mean, it's just really fun. I turned a dinosaur into a cow there. I got a banana off that dinosaur. I can now complete a quest over on Ginger Island without having to grow and wait for the banana tree. That was absolutely amazing. And I mean, if you think that's the pinnacle of what happens, it's not. I got a lucky ring. Now I didn't have footage of the ring popping out of a crate because it wasn't recording at the time. 
but I can assure you it was in a crate. I destroyed it and it popped out. That was double lucky rings for me. Now that I had double lucky rings combined with a magic raw candy, I almost had maxed out luck. The only thing that was stopping me was ginger ale, and that's something we can look at later on in the video. I gave Linus a gold bar for the help wanted quest. I don't know why he wants gold bars. I thought he gave up his ways of richness, but who am I to judge anyone else in this game? Gave Demetrius a melon too. He was looking for one of those for ages. Is Demetrius very happy about that? And he gave me some money. More friendship points as well for Demetrius. Look at all the lovely winter forgeables we have on the farm at the moment. It took me a good portion of the day to pick up all these. Once they were all harvested, I made more winter wild seeds. And I made a lot more. Look at the amount of them I can make here. 930 wild seeds. So I was going to put as many of those as possible into the ground. With the leftovers, we can make more tea saplings. That's 112 in total made right there. I'm going to sell those for more money. Went to Jordy's house. Met the family. Trying to fish on the ground. We got on great. Went to George. Gave him a hot pepper. He was looking for that for ages. George was a happy man. And I traded in more jades for staircases for future Scott Cavern runs. It was also Harvey's birthday, so I gave him a coffee. It was time to make more kegs, 80 kegs in total, ready to go. I was now processing the last pieces of the starfruit. We're going to be moving on to pumpkins very soon. It was also time to treat myself to a desert obelisk. I had the resources to make it, I had the money, I even had almost a million gold left over. It was now time to take on the submarine minigame and I got the blobfish, the spookfish and the midnight squid. All exclusive submarine fish, you can only get those three days of the whole year. So my advice, when that event does become accessible, go into it straight away, prioritize it, because you won't get those fish anywhere else. So we're going to go with fragments of the past for the next community quest for the week. I also grew some crops in the farm here. I was lucky enough to get garlic from the Skull Cavern run. So that was going to be 15 golden walnuts from the frog in total. Five for the melon, five for the wheat, and five for the garlic. I also gave in the banana here to the monkey. He's going to give me a few more golden walnuts for that. So I was well on the way to get lots and lots of golden walnuts. Also got the parrots to finish off the resort here. This gives me access to the beach. Put down some flute blocks here. That was the mermaid puzzle complete. Five more golden walnuts. Fished up the stingray. That was all the fish done in the whole game. All fish had been fished up. Let's have a look at the collection. The fish with max underneath them were fish I got perfection on. So I have a long way to go to get perfection on all the fish. The next day, Willie sends me a star drop for collecting all the fish. It's actually very sad because Willie said he doesn't have any kids to give the star drop onto, so he just gives it to me. I really hope in the near future, Willie finds love because he deserves it. Everyone deserves love. It was back to the dig site today. We were looking for fossils to give in to Professor Snail because I wanted to get more golden walnuts from him. I also got Clint to break open a few golden coconuts here. You always get a golden walnut from the first one. And I got very lucky and I managed to get one of the fossils in it from Professor Snail from the second one. Now I got a lot of bone fragments already from the dig site. So I just needed to kill a few skeletons to complete Gunther's quest. And that was easy enough to do. That was fragments of the past completed. 3500 gold in the bag. So Clint was looking for bars. He got an iron bar. He was happy. That was a favour for Clint Dunn. 500 gold in the bag. It was back to the desert trader for another magic rock candy. We were then back to the volcano dungeon. I picked up the dragon scale boots. I was delighted with those. A plus seven defense is what I needed so badly. I now had a really nice setup. Two lucky rings and the dragon scale boots. I got something I never got before from a chest. I found an old blueprint. Some sort of dwarvish blueprint. It must be related to the Margo mod. So we're going to hand that into Clint eventually. And we're going to start some sort of dwarf quest. I also picked up a golden egg from killing an enemy inside the volcano. That is going to get me a golden chicken. And th the game breaking thing here is you can only get a golden egg once you have attained perfection in the game. So to get golden chickens before perfection is going to be a very interesting mechanic. Went back to the Statue of Prestige, reset my foraging skills to accumulate more foraging perks in the future. Gus was on the resort today, so I purchased the Tropic Curry recipe straight away. Because you could go a whole year without Gus actually visiting the resort. So my advice, if you see Gus at the resort, get that recipe off him straight away. It's one of the hardest recipes to obtain because it's not guaranteed to be gotten at any time in the game. You can only get it when he visits the resort and it's pure RNG. 
you might not ever visit the resort, just so you know. So if you see him, just use up that 5,000 gold and grab the recipe. I got a cutscene here for George, and this activates when you accumulate enough friendship points with him. And because I chose the right option, I got one point here for the hero's journey, which was to offer sage advice to a townsfolk. It was also Evelyn's birthday, so I gave her a diamond. And we were back slaying void enemies from monster eradication coals. I just got a red mullet there from killing one of the void monsters. I also turned another one into a golden chicken. The weapon jack is such a funny chant to use. It just makes the game so funny. I used the rain totem and I managed to blow a hole in the old Georgia Mart to get at the hidden bundles. Level 5 forging again, this time we're taking lumberjack. Felled trees yield 25% more wood. I already took the forager before so I should already have that perk accessible to me. It's time to collect more iridium barrels today and here is another classic scene from Stardew Valley. How would you classify a tomato? It is of course a vegetable. Anybody who says otherwise are just straight up wrong. Let me know in the comments what you think. It's time to get Robin to upgrade my house again because I needed to get some sort of silver star wine for the secret bundles. And as we can see I have lots of lava eels in my fishing pond. I had to let them go because I needed caviar so I tried to surge it in there instead. It was then time to go back to the traveling cart, this time trading in on the geodes for artifact droves because I now needed artifacts over minerals. And once I have all the artifacts accumulated, I would then be one step closer to perfection because you have to give in all the minerals and artifacts to Gunther in order to achieve perfection. It's one of the steps necessary. It was back to the dig site, blown open more nodes to get more artifacts, Professor Snail's quests were coming along quite well. I got a banana sapling, but there was no point for that now, really, because I already got the golden waters from the monkey. I suppose I do need bananas in the future if I wanted to make the obelisk to warp to Ginger Island, so I do plant it regardless. So I got loads of ancient fruit today from the greenhouse, and they would all be transferred back into ancient fruit seeds, so I can fill up the greenhouse with ancient fruit. So we're well on the way to getting a greenhouse built up to the top with lovely ancient fruit that can be turned into ancient fruit wine eventually. It was time to get more oak resins and then all of my lovely mahogany trees were fully grown so I was going to cut all those down to get more hardwood. I made over 350,000 gold today primarily from selling lots of bits and bobs but the big heavy hitters in terms of money were iridium bars and wine. It was Leah's birthday today, gave her a salad, she was impressed. Then it was back down to the mines, killing void monsters and everything in between. I was having a great time using this blade of ruin. It was getting much stronger. I wanted to see how strong it could become, but because it was getting stronger, it was draining more and more HP every time I started to use it. If you look at my health there, as you can see, it's dropping very, very quickly upon each swing. But the Wappa Jack enchant is just too funny to pass up. Level 10 combat, we had Brute. Taking damage builds rage, improving combat prowess, plus 25 HP also. Then we had Bushwhacker. Crit chance, 50% increase. Strikes have a chance to poach items from enemies. That is very interesting. But for now, I went with Brute because I wanted to see how this limit gauge worked. Very interesting indeed. So it was time to upgrade my house even further. 100,000 gold for the seller. Thank you very much, Robin. It was then onwards to the next community quest. We had Cave Patrol and Aquatic Overpopulation. We're going to go with Cave Patrol. He just wants 50 bats slain. Easy enough for Clint. This was the week of Clint because we had his community quest, it was also his birthday this week and we also got him as a secret Santa. So we were easily going to max out Clint's friendship this week between those three events. I decided to do another quarry run today in the hopes of getting a magic rock candy from the floaty skulls that wasn't meant to be. For Clint's secret gift I gave him a gold star rabbit's foot. That was going to be a massive friendship boost with him. Vincent gave me a rainbow shell. That was actually quite nice and a rainbow shell is needed for a key quest down the road. We're now processing pumpkins into pumpkin juice and Clint said he's going to get started on that dwarvish blueprint that I gave him. I just have to give him a couple of days to sort it out. Unfortunately, we're at the end of the challenge. We don't get to see how that quest unfolds. But if you want a 200 day video, let me know in the comments if you enjoy this Margo mod so far. I switched back to the galaxy dagger, the blade of ruin, it was just way too hard to handle now, it was taking up too much health. Unfortunately, I couldn't get rid of the blade of ruin, couldn't even put it in a chest, it was stuck to my inventory. The golden chicken hatched, so that was going to be golden eggs in the next few days, I was super excited with that. 
The horrible thing about the Blade of Ruin is that if I attempt to swap out tools, there is a chance it will automatically bring me to the Blade of Ruin, which reduces my HP. So it was becoming quite the problematic weapon. Sturgeon wanted a diamond. I obliged, of course, because I want caviar as quickly as possible. It was time for the cutscene between Haley and Emily having an argument. I said, Haley, can this just be your only job? Come on now. Don't do that to your sister. You have to contribute. And I was given more points for that for the Hero's Journey quest. It was then time to slay some bats for Clint's quest, and I had a few days to do that. When that was finished, I got 6,000 gold off Clint. I was super happy. I also put a crystal fruit wine into one of the cakes here. And once that becomes a silver star wine, I'll be able to put that into one of the hidden bundles. We're now on day number one, year two, and we just meet Kent, a new NPC. So we need to maximize his friendship also in order to achieve perfection. We're now running around the farm. We're going to get our lovely oak resins. We also have a greenhouse almost filled up to the top with ancient fruit. We're going to visit Sandy in the desert. We are going to purchase a full stack of rhubarb seeds. Rhubarb is an amazing crop and it yields huge amounts of profit. We're also going to get to strong stuff, community quest for Pam. And to complete that, we're going to purchase some potato seeds off the lovely pier. We're also going to pick up a dinosaur mayonnaise because we need that for the last community center bundle. And as we can see, we have a lovely golden egg inside of our auto grabber. We're going to incubate that and we're going to have a huge giant farm of golden chickens. Now, because it is the first day of spring, lots of stuff has reformed on the farm. So we're going to use all of our lovely iridium tools and clear that up as quickly as possible. We're also collecting more golden walnuts to see if we can get access to Key's secret walnut room. We're going to visit Sandy again now today. We're going to purchase lots and lots of starfruit seeds. We are going to fill up our Ginger Island farm with a ton of starfruits. Starfruit wine is extremely profitable. If we want to get all of the warp obelisks and the gold clock, we are going to need thousands of starfruit wine. The rest of the day we spent watering up the crops and we finally got access to Key's secret walnut room. We can now take on the lovely key quests, get our hands on the lovely key currency, the key gems, which we need to purchase recipes and very powerful items the game has to offer. The first quest we're going to take on is Key's prismatic grange. We need to find a hundred of lots of different colored items. I'm also going to finish off the gem bird puzzle here. That's going to be more golden walnuts for me. There's just a few walnuts left now to collect. I had a lovely gold star rabbit's foot ready to go for Kent. That got him up to three hearts out of ten. So it's really good progress with Kent early on. We're then going to finish off the Key's Prismatic Range quest. I had all of the items already assembled beforehand. So it was a nice easy quest to do. 35 key gems straight off the bat. We're now going to go back to Sandy. I'm going to purchase Deluxe Speed Grows. And I'm going to put these on the Ginger Island farm because they will never expire. And it just means that the star fruit going forward will grow much faster. So, we had a few little dialogues here that we could choose for Kent's quest. I'm going to choose, I know you're hurting, but he needs to give Jodie a break. He needs to give her a chance. She doesn't know what he went through overseas with the war. And the reason why I'm showing you all these little dialogue scenarios is because I need to select the right options for the quest that we're doing in order to get rid of the horrible Blade of Ruin that we have equipped it and get a new weapon instead. So friendship of all of the NPCs must be prioritized so I can get these cutscenes so I can select the right options and I can complete all of the various paths. As you can see, it just said there that Gamragar has proven their honor. That has to be done three times along with other bits and bobs. It's a very big quest to do. It's a very difficult quest, but I am very confident that we will get there very soon and we're going to get a nice new shiny weapon as a reward. So I'm giving Abigail the Ornate Necklace that I got. That's more friendship points for me. We're also going to visit Robin. Now we're going to get Robin to make a coop. We do have a golden chicken, so we are going to have a giant golden chicken farm over the next couple of weeks and seasons. I'm also going to start the chain quest here. This woman is going to give me a memento. That has to be handed in to Kent, and he's going to give us an item, and it's going to be passed along until eventually we get back to the woman, and we're going to get lots of golden walnuts as a reward. So Kent is going to give us gourmet tomato salt as a reward there. Gus was right beside him. That was very fortunate. I'm going to give Gus the salt. He is going to give me the Stardew Valley Rose. What do we do with the rose? We're going to visit the desert, of course. We're going to give the rose to Sandy. And as a reward, she is going to give us a TV remote. That is going to be given to George. But before we get to talk to George, we get another cutscene here with Alex that says he's worthless. But I'm going to pick the middle option. I'm going to say we all have our strengths and weaknesses. So I have now proven my wisdom yet again. So we're one step closer to getting that lovely weapon upgrade. 
So we're just giving the George the remote here now, and he's going to give us another reward. He's going to give us an Arctic Shard. That is going to go to the Wizard, and he is going to give us a Wiggling Worm. We're going to bring the Worm straight down then to Willy, and Willy is finally going to give us the item we need to collect the lovely reward. He is going to give us the Pirate's Locket. So we're going to go back to Ginger Island with this. Now on my way back I noticed that a crow was on my Ginger Island farm. This is because of the Margo mod overhaul. Wasn't expecting that at all so I was kind of caught off guard there. So I will have to put scarecrows and rare crows on my Ginger Island farm to protect my crops. Birdie was not fishing today because it was raining so we're going to have to come back to Ginger Island on a sunny day to give her that pirate's locket. In the meantime we were still working on friendship. It was Mary Lewis's birthday. He gets another rabbit's foot. I had rabbit's feet to burn. I had so many rabbits in my barn. He goes up to 8 out of 10 hearts. Let's have a look at our hero's journey quest line. As we can see, we have the path of honor done. We have empathy and compassion done. We have advice done. All we needed to do now was give freely and share our abundance. Getting Pam's house upgraded would sort that out. And I just had to kill a few more monsters. And we would finally be rid of the blade of ruin. And I would get, hopefully, a much stronger weapon in return. So I'm going to give Birdie now the Pirate's Locket. She is going to award me with 5 Golden Walnuts and the Fairy Dust Recipe, which comes in super handy for speeding up certain progressions in this game, especially when it comes to the missing bundle. So we're going to put that Fairy Dust to use. It was time for another key quest. Danger in the Deep is the one we're going to go with. So that means we're now going to get access to radioactive ore and bars and we need that in order to get perfection so this is a necessary quest to do it was time to get more golden walnuts i played the dart game a total of three times it gets a bit harder each time you play it because you have less and less darts to use to get the score down to zero but i've played the game so many times now it wasn't much of a challenge to me <laughs> dart man gave me three golden walnuts it was now time to finally get rid of our galaxy dagger and we're going to get a galaxy sword instead. Thanks very much for everyone that commented on the last video to give me great advice on how to swap out that galaxy tiger. Because of the Margo mod, I could go back with prismatic shards and iridium bars as much times as I wanted, and I could get more galaxy tools. So I just used staircases, got down to 4120 here. It was a very easy quest to do because I had staircases. I can now enter the hardened version of the mines whenever I wanted to, to farm radioactive ores. I used the fairy dust here now to get a quick caviar and I also used it on a cask so I could get a silver star wine. I needed those for the Junimo missing bundle because I wanted to open up the theatre as quickly as possible. The theatre is a great place to get friendship points up with all of the NPCs of Stardew Valley. So we now had the missing bundle complete. We were awarded with the theatre. We also got a really cool cutscene here of the last Junimo making his way back to the Junimo world. It was also time to pick up all of our lovely potatoes. These were going to be all turned into alcohol, which we were going to give to Pam for her terrible habit. But we needed to do so because we wanted to complete all of the community quests. It was time to pick up more quests. We had biome balance and we had the crop order. I'm going to go with biome balance because I wanted to do a bit of fishing. And I wanted Demetrius to send me on the recipe for the farm computer. It was Vincent's birthday today. He gets a rabbit's foot, and that was at the friendship points with him up to 8 hearts out of 10. For the rest of the day, I'm just doing some fishing. I had to get a ton of fish together in order to complete the quest for Demetrius. One of the hardest challenges to complete in order to achieve perfection is to craft every item in the game. So I needed to get every recipe in the game, and Robin actually has a lot of door recipes. But the trick about Robin is that you have to come in and out of her inventory multiple times to get all of her recipes especially if you want to get all of the glaziers. So we actually had to do this a good few times up until we got the marble glazier. When I was finished, I got Robin to upgrade my coop to a big coop because I wanted to get as many golden chickens as possible. I got a super rare event the next day. The strange capsule landed on my farm. An alien does break out of that eventually. Nobody knows where it goes though. <laughs> as we can see, it was time to reforge professions. I could choose between combat, farming, fishing and mining. I'm going to go with farming, because I had so much rhubarb now to pull up on the farm and ancient fruit. It would be super simple to max out farming again and again and again. And that's the great thing about the Margo mod. We can max out professions over and over again, retaining all of the perks previously selected. Farming was back to zero, but it wasn't going to stay on zero for too long. We're going to run straight back out to the farm, 
collect all of the lovely rhubarb, the other bits and bobs that we have, we're going to get that back up to 10 almost instantly. Look at all the XP we're getting here for picking up this rhubarb. We're also going to sell all the rhubarb as well and make an absolute fortune of a profit. It does take a good few in-game hours to pull up all of this rhubarb because I did plant it literally all over the farm. Because I have iridium sprinklers, I have lots of space on the farm to plant thousands of crops. The strawberry event had come around and I purchased the full stack of strawberries to use. Level 10 farming, I already had agriculturist activated, so now I'm going to select artisan. Artisan machines work much faster, 10% faster, which is really good. That means the kegs will now produce wines at a much faster level. I'm going to reforge farming again, this time for 50,000 gold. It will get more expensive every time I reforge it, but it will be worth it because eventually I will be able to harness the power of all of the farming perks. I completed the quest for Pam, the strong stuff. 3,000 gold as a reward. Thank you very much, Pam. It was finally time to go to the forge. I was going to upgrade my galaxy sword. I was going to put a prismatic shard into it here. I got the Wapajack enchant again, which was amazing. The Wapajack is such a fun enchant to use. I'm also going to put three rubies into the weapon as well to increase its attack power. All that was left was to put three galaxy souls into this weapon and transform it into an infinity weapon. So it was finally time to collect all of the lovely star fruit on our ginger island farm. As we can see, our farming XP is just flying up again to the top. We're going to have that maxed out in no time at all again, which means we can select more farming perks. It was also time for another key quest. We had keys cuisine, I was thinking about that, but I said no, we'll do a danger in the deep again to get 50 more key gems. It also means we're going back into the mines, so we're getting valuable resources that we need in order to progress the game faster. For the community quests, we're going to go with Robin's Resource Rush. It was then back into the mines and we were going down levels. Now, this time I wasn't just spamming floors. If I saw ores, even copper ores, iron ores, gold, especially radioactive ores, I would prioritize those straight away. Level 5 farming, this time we're going the animal route. Rancher, we can be for an animals twice as fast. We then had a choice between breeder and producer. For breeder, incubation was twice as fast and natural pregnancy occurred three times more likely. But then we had producer, happy animals produced twice as frequently. But then it was the game changer, produce worth 5% more for every full barn on the map. I went with the first one, breeder, because I wanted the chickens to hatch much faster. I wanted hundreds of golden chickens on the farm. It was time to build Pam a house. I didn't have the wood though, I just thought it was 500,000 gold. So I had to farm 950 pieces of wood in order to make that happen. I also got a legend fish off of an enemy because of the Wapajack enchant. It was just another crazy thing that happened with the Marco mod. I was actually super excited about that. Went back to Robin this time with wood in hand. Paid her the 500,000 gold. And that was another part of our lovely Hero's Journey quest completed. As we can see, all I needed now was to slay approximately 300 more monsters and I could get rid of the Blade of Ruin and upgrade it to a new legendary weapon. I was super excited at this stage of the game. Met it down to 4120 again in the mines. I was rewarded with 50 more key gems. It was then time to go back to the forge and we were going to put more rubies into our lovely galaxy sword. There was just one more ruby I could put into it to increase its attack power even more. It was Pam's birthday. Give her some alcohol because we all know Pam just loves a good drink even if she's working that day. I was then back into the regular mines. What I was doing here was I was just slaying enemies trying to do monster eradication goals. It was actually quite fun because of the Wapajack enchant. You just don't know what these enemies are going to drop when you kill them. Because of the Wapajack enchant they could drop literally anything and i mean anything anything was up for grabs with this enchant so i spent a whole day slaying bugs once i was finished with the bugs i started moving on to the slimes then then the dust sprites because in order to get perfection we needed the monster slayer hero achievement which means that we had to slay a good portion of every monster in the game so here is a lovely cutscene here of robin finally upgraded pam's horrible caravan to a lovely fabulous house Maybe now Pam will change her bad habits and she will turn into the woman that she was always destined to be. It was time to reforge farming yet again. This would be the last time we get to reforge farming. There was one more farming perk that we could grab. It was then back to the mines and I was desperately trying to get this valor quest done as quickly as possible. 
It's always nice, of course, to get prismatic shards off regular enemies. Even though we were very far now into the game and I had tons of prismatic shards, it's still nice to get one. The Valor quest was finally achieved. I had all of the requirements done. The only thing that confused me was that the other paths that I did were red and not green. So there was actually an issue with the Marigold mod. So I had to turn the quest down to easy mode from medium mode to actually get the reward. But just so everyone knows, I did actually complete the quest on the medium difficulty. It just wouldn't register. Once the quest was handed in, the Blade of Ruin was converted into a new weapon called the Blade of Dawn. And this was a very powerful weapon indeed. It even came with some hidden perks. One of them being Crusader. It could destroy undead enemies such as mummies without having to blow them up to finish them off. It also had really nice attack stats, 120 to 160 damage. And it kept the enchant from the Blade of Ruin. So it also had <laughs> the Wabajack enchant on it, which means for more diverse gameplay. It was now time to do some side quests. I just walked into the secret woods here with a maple syrup just to get the bear's knowledge. I also handed in a rabbit's foot to get a special charm, which is a permanent luck increase for me. That means more successful Skull Cavern runs in the future. I spoke to Clint today and he finally finished translating the blueprint. He would have finished much, much earlier, but there was bugs with the Marigold mod and I had to download and install a previous version of the Marigold mod to get around this little glitch. Once I got past this dialogue, I could then download the latest version of the Marigold mod and continue on from where I left off. Because Clint had transcribed this new blueprint, a new option became available, the Forge option. Clint could now produce a Dragon Tooth Club, provided I gave him the items that were just on the description there, 10 dragon's teeth in total, so multiple visits to the Volcano Dungeon would be needed in order to get Clint to forge up this item for us. What was also very interesting is that more blueprints could be gotten and Clint can actually forge a huge array of dragon and dwarvish and other different types of weaponry. But we'll get more into that later on in this video. So we're back to smelting copper bars and we're also getting tons of starfruit wine here. Now we have lots of cakes put down. I don't really make any more cakes. I feel like I had enough cakes to get to 10 million gold after one or two seasons. Level 10 farming, we're now going to get the last perk needed. Producer, this is going to be a huge money maker for us the more coops we get and the more coops we can fill up with lovely golden chickens. I also got an option there to say that the farming skill could now be further progressed. That means it can go beyond level 10. It was time to reforge yet another profession. We're going to select mining this time. I felt that mining would be easy enough to max out because I had so many bombs and because I could do lots of skull cavern runs. So I'm going to buy lots of sugar off here today. Reason for this, I want to make some gold star ginger ale to maximize my luck when I go into the likes of the Skull Cavern. The more luck I go into the Skull Cavern with, the more Iridium nodes will spawn for me. Now I was doing the hardened version of Skull Cavern. This meant that I was also going to get radioactive ore along with the regular Iridium ore. So it just meant much better profits for me. I got down to floor 100 and because I had the secret node that stated from Mr. Key to get down to floor 100, I got the Iridium milk from him, which gives me a permanent health increase of 25. Thank you very much, Mr. Key. I also got a Galaxy Soul from a slain enemy, which was really nice. These Galaxy Souls are super expensive to buy using key gem currency. So it's always nice to pick up a few when you're killing enemies. So it was back down into the Skull Cavern today, farming lots and lots of Iridium ores. As you can see, my character is super fast. That's because of a money perk that I have, where every time I get down a few levels, my character's speed will increase. Level 5 mining again, this time we're going to get miner plus 1 ore per vein. We're also going to get Leah to dance with us. Poor Elliot, he will have to sit back, relax and watch me dance with Leah during the flower festival. The reason why I chose Leah was because I needed to get extra friendship points with her to max out her friendship and to learn all of her lovely hidden recipe secrets. The next day it was time to farm all of our lovely strawberries. As we can see my farming level now increased to 11. This was very nice for us because the more our farming level increased, the higher the chance there is that we're going to get gold and iridium quality crops. That means more money for us. We're going to visit Robin today. We're going to get her to make another coop so we can put more golden chickens inside. Because it was Thursday, I traded in three prismatic shards for a magic rock candy. Level 12 farming today. 
not only do I get more proficient with items, which means I use less energy to use these items all the time, but our farming skill also goes up so that the quality of crops that we harvest will also go up. Because I got level 15 farming, I could select one existing perk and upgrade it. Rancher meant animals could be friend a lot faster, but I selected Harvester. 20% chance for extra yield from harvested crops. That was just too good to pass up, especially for the likes of Starfruit and Ancient Fruit. It was Pierre's birthday. He gets a rabbit part. Pierre's super happy. That is almost Pierre maxed out. Just one or two hearts to go with him. Back on Ginger Island, look at our lovely Starfruit and our farming skill still increases. I imagine at this stage of the game that it went up to 20, but I didn't know if it went beyond 20. I finally got the Prismatic Jelly community quest. I needed this to learn the Monster Musk. When I found the Prismatic Slime, it transformed into an ostrich because of the Wapajack enchant. So I didn't actually kill the slime, which means I did not get the Prismatic Jelly. <laughs> I was very disgruntled by this because I had to find the slime all over again. Level 20 farm and we could upgrade another perk. Agriculturist crops grow 20% faster or artisan. All artisan machines work 25% faster. Of course, I'm going to go with artisan. That means kegs will process my lovely wines 25% faster. It was an absolute no-brainer to select that perk for upgrade. It's Emily's birthday today finally maxed her out 8 out of 8 hearts for her. So we're doing really well with the friendship. I finally found another prismatic slime. I did not fight it using the Wapajack enchant just in case. I took out my old friend, my galaxy dagger, slayed it, picked up the prismatic jelly, gave it to the wizard. The wizard was actually doing a sprint here. I didn't know why, but he was glitching through everything. I don't know if it's because of the Margo mod or if some other mod I have installed because I actually have a huge array of mods installed on this game. But I actually had to use a little bit of wit here to corner the wizard to give him the prismatic jelly that he wanted so bad. As a reward, the wizard will give me a couple of thousand gold, but the big reward will come in the mail the next day when he teaches me the Monster Musk recipe. Monster Musk makes monster eradication goals extremely easy to complete. It was back to Robin for a big coop upgrade. Now we're going to visit the good old dwarf. So I purchased a rare crow off the dwarf. I need that in order to learn the deluxe rare crow recipe. I also picked up a flow recipe from him as well. I had 1.8 million gold, so I decided to get a couple of warp obelisks here for the farm. Because I was using a mod, they looked like doors, not obelisks, but I thought they looked super cool nonetheless. So I now have three obelisks on the farm. I've got the desert, I've got the mountains, and I've got the beach. All I needed was just Ginger Island Warp Obelisk, but I needed a lot more money for that. I also needed bananas and mango fruit. I was also processing more goods today, and then before we know it, it got into summertime. So I had to sight away all these crops. As you can see, the range on the golden site is absolutely huge because of the Marigold mod. This is one of the great things about the Marigold mod. I love the range and the sites that are given. So I purchased a few of every single summer crop Pierre had to offer. When I was finished with Pierre, I also visited the desert and I had a quick chat with Sandy to purchase the summer crops that she had as well. Pierre also had red cabbages because it was year number two. I needed those as well for perfection. I also got some grass starter just so I wasn't spending huge amounts of money with Marnie all the time buying hay. He was also selling some bouquets, so I'm going to get lots of bouquets. I'm also going to get one of each sapling that Pierre had. I was going to put all these into the greenhouse because there eventually will come a time where I will need to craft every single cooking recipe in the game. And to make that very easy, it's best to have all the crops and all of the saplings ready to go on the farm. The great thing about summer is that we can use a starfruit on our main farm. So I'm going to purchase thousands of starfruit. That means we are going to make hundreds of thousands, probably millions of gold from all the starfruit we're going to get. I'm also going to purchase artifact troves off of Desert Trader today because I need to find all of the artifacts in order to get a star drop and we need all the star drops if we want to get perfection. So we're going to get Clint to break open all of these lovely troves now in the hopes to get the rest of the artifacts that we need. I did get a lot of artifacts that were required but to get the rest of the artifacts, I actually have to hold them up out of the ground in specific areas. So there actually isn't anything else I can get out of the troves. So I need the palm fossil, the skeleton hand. And I think the last item there is some sort of a skeletal tail. 
So hopefully, if RNG is in our favour, we can mine, hoe or slay enemies and get these items no problem at all in the next season or two. It was time for another key quest. This time, we're going to go with Key's Kindness. Give 50 enough gifts in one week. This is going to hit two birds at one stone because we still need to max out all of the Stardew Valley NPC's relationships. I also had 178 key gems to play around with, so I purchased two Galaxy Souls so I can upgrade my weapon to an infinity weapon. With the rest, I just bought some recipes. I will have to make all those items eventually to get closer to perfection. So the rest of the key gems I get, recipes will be prioritized. So we're back in the volcano dungeon today. We're just getting cinder shards. Picked up an ostrich egg there. That's very nice indeed. Ostriches are actually really nice. I experimented with the Blade of Dawn. It wouldn't take any of the Galaxy Souls. So instead, I decided to put them into my Galaxy Sword to upgrade that to an Infinity Blade. Once it took the three Galaxy Souls, it didn't actually transform, but it had a buff on it called Soul. I was rightly stumped at this stage of the game, so I had to go onto GitHub and look up the notes on the Margoman to find out how on earth I upgrade this weapon from a Galaxy Weapon to an Infinity Weapon. It turns out I had to dismantle my lovely Blade of Dawn in order to upgrade my Galaxy Weapon to an Infinity Weapon. After everything I've been through, I was very hesitant about this. I really didn't want to dismantle the weapon because it was so hard to get, it was so time consuming. But curiosity got the better of me and I thought to myself, maybe the Infinity Weapon, because of the Margo mod, is far superior to that of the original Infinity Weapon. So I dismantled the weapon, turned my blade into an Infinity Blade, and it was extremely powerful indeed. 182 to 234 damage, it was a beast of a weapon. It also had a fourth gem slot on it, which means I could upgrade it again with a ruby, further increasing its attack power potential. The weapon was now a godly weapon with 196 to 252 damage. This weapon would one-shot a lot of enemies in the game, with the exception of course to the enemies from the hardened versions of the mines and Miskal Caverns. The last few artifacts I needed were going to be from the dig site area here, the one of the bone nodes, and of course the artifact dig spots. So I came here every couple of days with bombs, in the hopes that I would get the items required to get that lovely star drop off Gunther. I also finished off Professor Snail's artifact quest. This means I get a lot more golden walnuts and I also get the ostrich incubator along with a mango sapling. Mangoes are of course needed in order to get that lovely warp obelisk to Ginger Island. I selected Pierre's prime produce, 25 ghost star vegetables would now be trivial. Look at all of the lovely eggs that I have assembled today. I also have four iridium rabbits feet ready to go for maximum friendship potential. So it's now time to run around the map and give all of these lovely NPCs loved gifts in order to complete the key quest I have for this week. This is great because I'm also getting friendship points up with all of the NPCs. That means I'm getting closer to perfection. I harvested some Iridium Barrels today and I'm also working on the Dwarf. His friendship level is only zero at the moment because I keep forgetting that he actually exists. I keep forgetting that I can actually get relationship points up with him. So a lot more effort will be needed with the Dwarf over the next couple of weeks to push him up to 10 hearts. So it was time to make the Iridium Band. After reading the notes on GitHub, I finally understood the true value of this ring. This ring is extremely overpowered. The first thing you have to do is prep it by giving it a Galaxy Soul. This turns the Iridium Band into an Infinity Band. The Infinity Band has four ring slots attached to it, but you can only use rings that power up stats, such as the Ruby Ring, for example, to increase attack power or a magnet ring to increase magnetism range. I couldn't use, for example, a burglar ring or a phoenix ring or a slime charmer ring. They had to be just regular stat increasing rings. So I put four ruby rings into this infinity band, giving it a total of a 40% increased damage output. This was absolutely massive. To have 40% increased damage on one ring slot was just so overpowered. If I wanted to, I could have done it on the second ring slot, increasing my overall attack power by 80%, but there wasn't really a whole lot of point to doing that because I already had a very powerful weapon. Most enemies won't stand an absolute chance when it comes to combat. It was finally time to clear out the quarry and turn it into a tree farm. 
The reason why I wanted wood was because any future coop upgrades or coop expenses would be notified by all the wood I would have from the quarry. It was now time to reforge combat, and I also made tons of worm bins today. The reason why I'm making worm bins is because I'm going to need thousands of bait for the tactic that I'm going to utilize now to constantly increase my fishing skill. Because I would have to reforge fishing over and over and over again if I wanted to max that out at level 20 and grab all of the lovely, juicy fishing perks. Crab pots, of course, are the way to go. It was time then to go back to Robin. We're going to get another coop. That means more lovely chickens for us. Today was Gus's birthday, so we're going to give him a rabbit's foot. Gus is super happy, and Gus is now maxed out 10 out of 10 hearts. Thank you very much. So I am now collecting tons of crab pot forgeables today. This is going to make leveling up fishing super simple. I can now also buy crab pots off Willy if I so wish. I could spend millions of gold on crab pots. And it's just a much easier and faster way to get fishing skill up. Instead of spending all my money on crab pots, I just purchase a few hundred for now. Just to see how things will unfold with this amount of crab pots in the actual game. I was worried that too many crab pots could crash the actual game itself, so I just went with a few hundred instead of purchasing thousands of them. Because I had so many crab pots laid out, it did actually take a very long time to fill them up with bait. It was then back to the Statue of Prestige and it was time to reforge our fishing skill. Fishing would go back to zero. Not to worry though, with all of the crab pots we have put down, it would be very easy to get fishing back up to 10. It was time for the Island Ingredients quest. The reward from this one would yield the recipe for the solar panels, which we needed for perfection. But I needed to make room on the Ginger Island farm to grow pineapples. I had to ship 100 pineapples in total. Thankfully, I had lots of pineapple seeds in a chest ready to go for an occasion such as this. Maru's birthday today. She is now 8 out of 8 hearts. Very nice indeed. We're getting there with the relationships. The rest of the day is spent just getting all of the lovely fish and trash out of the crab pots. The next day was the Luau, a magnificent event to get multiple hearts up with multiple NPCs. I put in a ghost or a cauliflower. This yields the best result from the governor. I got an achievement there, the beloved farmer. That means that a lot of NPCs now have very high relationships with me, which is really nice. Went back to Sandy in the desert, another full stack of starfruit. We're ready to go for our lovely Stardew Valley farm. We're now incubating more golden eggs. They will turn into golden chickens. Golden chickens will lay a golden egg every single day. Golden chickens are just so overpowered. Our lovely greenhouse is now filled up to the top with ancient fruit. We're going to harvest all of this. Level 5 fishing. This time we're going to go to Trapper out. Crab pots are cheaper. We're also going to give Alex a gift today because it's his birthday. Alex is now maxed out. 8 out of 8 hearts. We also finished Pierre's prime produce. 2500 gold in the bag. So I went to the quarry cave today to slay some floating skulls in the hopes they would drop the skeletal hand artifact that I need in order to get to Gunther. It was then outside of the quarry, cutting down trees. It was then time to upgrade our coop to a deluxe coop. You're going to see that screen a lot. We do end up with a lot of coops because I just absolutely love golden chickens. It was then time to sell all of the lovely crabs and other fish bits and bobs that I got from the crab pots. I'm going to make lots of money from that. It was then time to pick up another key quest. We're going to go with Key's Prismatic Range again. That will be simple enough to do. I made a simple mistake here now where I thought that regular bait would suffice as the purple coloured item, but it didn't. The game would accept bug meat, but it would not accept bait, which kind of sucked in my opinion. Went back the next day with Iridium Ore because I literally had thousands of Iridium Ore from doing all of the Skull Cavern runs that I have been doing. So I purchased Pierre's missing stock list. This makes grabbing items to craft recipes that are on super simple, especially all of the cooking recipes. I then made some tree fertilizers and we're just going to regrow up our lovely quarry farm again. I'm also going to put down paths so that any sort of future tree farms that I want to make will be made swiftly and efficiently. Look at all of the money I made today, primarily from selling starfruit wines. I even had some iridium starfruit wines there too, which is really nice. I'm going to select the tropical fish quest today. That means I get a nice big fish tank off Willy as a reward. For Key's quests, I was going to go with extended family because there was absolutely no way on this earth I was going to give Key's to crap. It's just not worth it in my opinion. I know you get a lot of key gems from it, but the effort that is needed to complete that quest is just not worth the time or the energy. 
After spending the rest of that day fishing, I completed Willie's quest, the reward, a deluxe fish tank. Thank you very much. It was also time to give Sam a birthday gift that put him up to 8 out of 8 hearts. Nice one, Sam. Now, the friendship level with Kent was pretty low at the moment, so I needed to put in an extra effort here. So I completed a quest to give Kent a starfruit. I also gave him a loved gift as well, and I pushed his hearts up to 6 out of 10. His hearts was originally 4. That wasn't too shabby at all. Level 10 fishing, we had a choice now between Lore Master. Lore Master enables crab pots to trap fish twice per day. That means if I loot a crab pot, then it will recatch a fish that same day. So basically, you can loot the same crab pot twice per day. Conversationist did look good, but because I wanted to level up fishing as quickly as possible, I decided to take the crab pot pork. It was then time to fish all of the legendary fish up again. So we got the glacier fish, the legend 2, Followed by the lovely Miss Angler. I actually almost got a perfect catch on Miss Angler. I was so close. The son of the Crimson Fish and the Radioactive Carp. That was all of the legendary fish recaught. It was then time to collect all of my lovely caviar. This was going to sell for quite a lot of money. The reason why I'm making caviar is because I have a maxed out sturgeon fishing pond. They generate tons of sturgeon roe every single day. Demetrius' birthday, he was finally maxed out. 10 out of 10. We're getting there with the NPCs. It was then time to collect all of the lovely pineapples. This would yield just over 50. I needed 50 more though to complete the quest for Caroline. I now had enough materials for the island obelisk. This was the final obelisk needed. I now had all of the warp obelisks in the game. I could now fast travel to any of the main portions of the game from my farm instantly. Before the day was out, I visited the greenhouse and picked up all of the ancient fruit. Back down into the mines, we are aiming for monster eradication goals. I did of course take a monster musk and just look at the mayhem here with the Wapajack enchant combined with a monster musk. It's just so funny watching half these monsters transform into weird animals or drop weird items. <laughs> Level 5 combat, we're going with fighter again. Damage plus 10%, HP plus 15. It's always a great start to the day when you get to harvest lovely staff root. I can just picture all of that starfruit wine right now, coming back hundreds of thousands of gold. I purchased more staircases today, and I'm also going to get the warp quote into the desert. It was then back to cutting down trees, attempting to increase my foraging skill back to 10, so I can unlock more foraging perks and make my foraging profession much stronger overall. I made just almost 730,000 gold there, just from selling starfruit wine and other bits and bobs. I asked the dwarf if he wanted to come to the cinema with me, of course, he obliged. It was going to be a lovely date in the cinema with the dwarf. I purchased his favourite food, just so he'd get extra friendship points, which was a rock candy. It's only 90 gold, so it's definitely worth getting to get those extra few friendship points when you go into the theatre with an NPC. We watched Journey of the Pirate King, and the dwarf gave more or less a neutral response for this, but I did accumulate extra friendship points with the dwarf. The dwarf was on now 5 out of 10 hearts, so we're definitely getting there with that. It was time for another key quest. How fast these weeks come and go was just amazing. It's because I was having so much fun with the Marigold mod, I just kept losing track of time. We're going to go with Danger in the Deep again, for the simple fact that I wanted 50 key gems to get the rest of the recipes, and to get other bits and bobs as well. Maru's birthday gave her a gift, and it was back to pulling up starfruit. Today was Tuesday. Normally, you can't get Robin on a Tuesday, but if you click on her till just at the right time when she passes it, you can activate her lovely options and you can get her to build or even buy stuff from her wares. I picked up a weapon today, the Obsidian Edge. The Margo mod has overhauled all weapons and it's made the Obsidian Edge a super rare weapon. It had a 100% crit chance on it. Now that doesn't mean you're going to crit every single time you attack an enemy. It just means that you have a very good chance of landing a critical hit. It was Willy's birthday today. He's going to get a Prismatic Shard. Willy is now 10 out of 10 hearts. Thank you very much, Willy. It was then back into the Volcano Dungeon. I was desperately looking for more blueprints that I could give to Clint because I really wanted to get him to make a lot more of those lovely cool weapons. I got level 10 mining today. It's time we're going to go with Prospector. Locations of ladders and mining nodes revealed occasionally detect rocks with valuable minerals. It's just an awesome profession altogether. It was Leo's birthday today, gave him a rabbit's foot, 9 out of 10 hearts with Leo, so I was almost there with him now, just one more heart, and Leo would be maxed out. The rest of the day was spent just cutting down more trees, I was very close to getting my forges built to 10, 
And there we go, Farge back up to 10. I find it very hard to increase Farge's skills. But the farming skills by far the easiest to do because there's just so many crops. So the parrots just gave Leah a home there on Stardew Valley. That was really nice. Level 10 foraging, I'm going to go with the arborist. All trees grow faster. Normal trees can drop hardwood. That is just amazing. I might get a tapper next time around if we get foraging back up to 10. It was time to collect the last few remaining pineapples to complete the island ingredients community quest. It was also time to fill up our lovely cakes with more starfruit wines. 15,000 gold for the completion of island ingredients, but the big prize are the solar panels that we get in the mail from Caroline. Solar panels are absolutely amazing items. Just put them out in the desert, then they'll generate battery packs for you every couple of days. It was time to reforge mining yet again. Just a few more Skull Cavern runs that would be maxed out no problem. I then spent the great portion of today giving all of the bachelors and bachelorettes bouquets because I wanted to get them all to 10 hearts. I didn't need to get them to 10 hearts, I just wanted to because I'm a completionist. It was time to get the Deluxe Coop upgrade, more golden chickens for us. We got the lovely friendship scene here with Shane, we can now incubate eggs and there's a chance we will get blue chickens once those chickens hatch. Blue chickens are really cool, of course they operate the exact same as regular chickens, they're just blue. We were now into fall, today is going to be spent hoeing up the farm, getting it ready for an absolute ton of crops. So we're going to get pumpkins, eggplants, we're going to get all of the crops available to us in fall, just for the sake of getting perfection. We're also going to visit Sandy and we're going to get the beet seeds because we also need those to get perfection. We have to ship one of each item. It's also time for more community quests. I had a look at the crop order and it looks like Mir Lewis wants me to generate 100 artichokes for him. I obliged, of course, being the super helpful farmer that I am. It was time for another quest. We had danger in the deep or let's play a game. You know what? On this occasion, I decided to give the Junimo cart another go. I've never in my life of all the thousands of hours I've printed this game, I've never not once beaten Mary Lewis's record. But this challenge was different. I had finally accumulated enough skills to get up to 74,000 points on Juno Cart. I beat Mary Lewis. I finally beat the Let's Play a Game Key Quest. It took me a couple of years to do it in real life, but I got there in the end. <laughs> it was time to plant all of these lovely artichokes, and it was time to reforge another profession. This time, we were going to reforge foraging yet again. Speaking of foraging, I have tons of fall seeds here ready to be planted. It took me the bones of almost a full day to put all those seeds down, and we're incubating more golden chickens. Back to Robin, she's going to build us another coop, and we're now continuing at Mr. Key Quest to get into the casino. The next thing we have to do is place 10 beets inside Mary Lewis's fridge. That's going to take a couple of days, because the beets are growing at the moment. So my scavenger senses were tingling, and this is just showing some footage of what you can actually get inside some of the scavenger chests, not too bad. The Wapajack enchant has yet again almost broken the game by awarding me with an additional golden walnut for slaying an enemy. That is just absolutely insane. That means with the Wapajack enchant you could potentially get perfection without finding all of the golden walnuts over on Ginger Island. And if you think that's nuts, wait until you see what else lies in store with this Wapajack enchant. It has now got to the stage in the game where perfection is actually very close. All we're waiting for primarily is just the rest of the cooking recipes and we could more or less force our way through to perfection. But I don't want to get perfection just yet. I want to max out all of the professions. I want to experience everything the Margomod has to offer. There's still a good few things to do though before we can confirm perfection. That includes getting hearts up with all of our lovely Sergio Valley NPCs. We're working on Sandy now at the moment. She's six hearts out of ten. When she gets a birthday, hopefully in the next few weeks or days, and we give her a really nice gift that can push her up to ten hearts. We're back down doing Scott Cavern runs, trying to get our mining skill back up again to ten, just to get all of those lovely additional mining perks. So the minor perk on the left is grayed out because we have all of the tears selected from that side. This time we're going to go with Gemologist. Progressively identify minerals at higher quality and crystallariums produce 25% faster. That is absolutely overpowered. And if just like farming, we can now progress our mining skill up to 20 as well. So things are going to get very exciting indeed. Got the archaeologist enchant for my iridium hoe in the hopes 
to pull up the last few remaining artifacts I need so I can get that lovely star drop off Gunther. I got every artifact that the beach has to offer except the Pam fossil. What I need so badly right now is the Pam fossil. And there's a chance you can get that in Sinistap Forest, you can get it on the beaches, you can also get it in the desert. It is just extremely rare. It might be common for other people playing the game, but on this playthrough it just is not popping up at all. So I do spend quite a lot of time every single day running around looking for artifact spots to hoe up. I was also able to enchant this site to my surprise, and the enchant that it got, believe it or not, was Haymaker. This means that if I whack fibre bushes with the site, I can't get hay out of it to feed my lovely golden chickens. I was delighted with this new overhaul from the Margo mod. It was our time to collect all of the lovely caviar because the sturgeons are just outputting extremes amount of sturgeon row on a daily basis. I'm going to purchase a lot more starfruit today. That would be converted into starfruit wine. I'm also going to treat myself here now. I have 81 key gems. So I'm going to get the last few remaining recipes. We're going to get the hopper recipe. That's 50 key gems. That's all of the recipes now obtained from Key's Secret Walnut Room. So any future key gems I get my hands on, I can do what I like with those. Our ginger island farm is now filled up to the top with more starfruit. And look at all of our lovely fall forageables. I'm going to spend half the day pulling up all these forageables, increasing my foraging skill. We're going to go with Robin's Resource Rush again. Just a thousand pieces of stone, no problem at all, Robin. We're then going to make an absolute truckload of fall wild seeds. They will be put back on the farm because we're still only in the early stages of fall. So we will rinse and repeat this method and try to get as many foraging levels as possible. The artichokes were also ready, decided to harvest all those. And we also got the beets as well, so we're going to put those into Merleus' fridge, which continues the casino questline for us. The next thing we had to do was give the sand dragon his final meal. And that just means going to the desert and putting a soul essence into this lovely skeleton dragon remains mouth. We can now enter the casino, and the reason why we need to get into the casino is because we need to get the alien rare crow, which is needed for perfection. I also got the casino license here, the club card, so I can now go in and gamble money, no problem at all. 8,000 gold for the crop order quest. Not bad. I suppose at this stage of the game, it is pennies that we're talking about. As we can see, I just keep doing double or nothing until I have enough key points to purchase the rare crow. The alien rare crow wasn't actually the last rare crow I needed. The one I was missing was actually from the Halloween event that I forgot to purchase in the previous video. So I make sure I'm going to purchase that now when we get to the end of fall. Another key quest completed. That was just a four precious stones quest for key gems for me. I'm also farming the volcano dungeon for two reasons. The first is that I really, really want to get more schematics to give in to Clint. Secondly, I need to get a kill count up on magma sprites and magma sparkers for monster eradication goals. So I gave Jordi a gift today to get her friendship points up, and I also got the Furaguman decoration from my farm by putting a strange bone into Vincent's chest. It was then back to Ginger Island and I was farming these bone nodes every couple of days in the hopes to get a palm fossil. It was just not dropping for me at all. Then it was back into the volcano dungeon to see if I could get more goodies. I managed to get a burglar ring and a hot java ring inside of the volcano dungeon today. It was because of the wapajack enchant that an enemy managed to drop the burglar ring. That is actually amazing luck. The burglar ring is so handy. Back to Robin, we are going to get another coop upgraded. That means more golden chickens for us. We're now going back into the mines to do Robin's resource rush. Best way to do this is to just break open the large stone chunks. Get lots of stone that way. That's 2,500 gold in the bag. And of course, that also means a happy Robin. I'm collecting more iridium bars today. It's now time to start assembling all of the lovely resources and materials to craft every item in the game. I was running low on healable foods, so I went to Gus, purchased a couple of salads off him. Then it was back into my lovely coops and we are going to incubate more chickens. At the moment it looks like I don't have a whole lot of golden chickens, but I actually do. I got a really rare event today. The witch came along and she's going to convert one of my lovely golden eggs into a void egg. If I so wish, I can have a void chicken farm, but we're not going to go the void chicken route in this challenge. We're sticking with the lovely overpowered golden chickens. Level 10 fishing again. We're going to go with Aquarius. Fish pond max capacity plus two. So overpowered. We can also now put legendary fish into fish ponds 
which is absolutely amazing. So I managed to finally ship off one of every item in the game. Here is just a list of all of the items that I had to ship in order to achieve that. We are now one step closer to obtaining perfection using the Margot mod. It's time to convert more Sturgeon Row back into caviar and we're going back to the Statue of Prestige to reforge fishing yet again. It's going to be back to the crab pots now for a couple of days. It was Sandy's birthday. I gave her the best rabbit's foot I could find that maxed her out straight away. It's back to pulling up fall forageables and we're making more fall wild seeds. going to plant those straight back into the ground and that's going to be a lot more forages for us in a couple of days. It was back to the Sergio Valley Fair. I had extremely good items. There was absolutely no way I wasn't getting first place. And of course, Mary Lewis towards me with a rating of 108. That's first place for me. I gambled loads of coins on green, and I had enough money then to purchase everything that the Sergio Valley Fair merchant had, including the rare claw, the glowstone ring, the rug, and everything in between. It was then time to go back to Robin, and it was another coop upgrade, another deluxe coop added to the farm that means more golden chickens it was back to ginger island in the hopes to get this palm fossil so it was just blown up the dig site yet again but unfortunately no palm fossil it was then back to cut down some trees getting the foraging skill up as quickly as possible level 10 foraging this time we're going to go with ecologist wild berries restore 50 percent more health and energy and progressively identify forage of higher quality this means because i'm pulling up iridium quality forageables Back to the dig site in the hopes to get this cursed pan fossil. It just wasn't popping up for me at all. Time to harvest all of the starfruit on our ginger island farm. It will of course be processed back into starfruit wine. It's now Saturday, the best set to go to the beach if you haven't been there all week, as forageables would accumulate, but they will reset once Saturday ends. We're then going to lose all of the crab pots. We've hundreds of crab pots now, so it does take quite a number of in-game hours to get you all of the crab pots. Level 10 fishing, we're now going to select Conversationist. This means crab pots without bait can trap junk and clean the valley's waters, can earn village favor and even get us tax deductions. Now tax does come with the Marigo mod, but I disabled that function because I didn't want to have a super stressful playthrough. But tax is something I might incorporate into future challenges. Let me know in the comments. It was time to pick up all of the lovely fall forageables again. And it was back to the Statue of Prestige and we were going to rework foraging all over again. Not to worry though, because we had tons of forageables to pick up to get that sorted as quickly as possible. It was time to do more Junimo Kart. And this time I actually made it to the final level, but I failed miserably. This level is actually quite hard because you have to time your jumps constantly. And there's so many different jumping platforms, I just failed at the level miserably. In my defense though, it was my first time at that level. I just wanted to show everyone my my progress when it comes to how well I'm doing at Junimo Kart at the moment. One day I am sure I will be able to clear Junimo Kart on both progress mode and endless mode. In the meantime, I purchased the horse flute and the Junimo chests for my lovely farm. I'm also going to get a lot more staircases because we're going to be doing a lot more Skull Cavern runs to get our combat skills up, our mining skills up and everything else in between. It was back to the dig site, but to no avail, no pap fossil. It was time to get all these lovely fall forageables. This was going to be a huge increase to my foraging skill. And it was back to Robin to get a stables this time. It was now time for another key quest. This time we're going to go with Key's Cuisine instead of Skull Cavern Invasion. The reason why I chose Key's Cuisine is because I had so much stuff gotten from the crab pots. This quest would just be trivial to do. Went back to the forge here for Clint. And I finally had enough dragon teeth to get Clint to forge the dragon tooth club. It would take Clint a few days to get that done, but once I have the club, it will be a ferociously strong weapon because it has been reworked via the Margo Mind. It was time to make sashimi for the lovely key quest, and I had so many crabs and just everything between from the crab pots, I could make thousands upon thousands of sashimi. Have you ever seen so much sashimi in your life? This would all be sold, of course, for huge profits altogether. So that is the great thing about crab pots. In huge numbers, crab pots are actually very profitable indeed. Look at all the money I made from the sashimi. I made well over 150,000 gold. It was back to Ginger Island, and then it was back to the dig site, trying to get this palm fossil. It just was not coming up 
at all. I've been trying this almost every single day because I really wanted to get the star drop before the challenge ends to make some serious progression. It just wasn't happening. I got the master enchant for my fishing rod though and I spent the rest of the day pulling up lava eels to further increase my fishing skill. Lava eels are actually pretty easy to catch now considering that I have the trap bobber and I have the enchant master on my fishing rod which gives me a fishing skill. It was time to get yet another fish pond because I wanted a fish pond for each legendary fish that I had. It was then time to give George a lovely rabbit's foot for his birthday and he was super happy with that. More Natalus fossils, but no Pam fossils. Luck was not on my side when it was coming to the probability of getting the artifacts I needed to complete the Gunther's Height quest. I finally had enough money to get the gold clock, 10 million gold for this item, it was needed for perfection. So I was now finished with all of the huge money hungry challenges. I got my Dragon Tooth Club, I wanted to enchant it to experience its amazing potential, so I did a few Volcano runs just to get some cinder shards, to get some rubies and other bits and bobs to fully max out this new dragon tooth club that I got. It was Skull Cavern the next day and as we can see I was one shotting these circuits most of the time because I just had so much offensive capabilities now these Skull Cavern enemies didn't stand a chance. The Wapajack has done it again awarding me with the trimmed lucky purple shorts from killing a giant slime. <laughs> I was now wiping out serpents left, right and center just to get the monster hunter medication goals complete and that was the serpents done and dusted. All that was left now was the magma sprites and the magma sparkers from the volcano dungeon. Level 10 combat we're getting the bushwhacker finally and what's really cool about bushwhacker is that there's a chance when we kill an enemy we can poach an item from it. I also picked up the last few recipes I needed from the ginger island trader in order to craft and get perfection. It was now time to upgrade our lovely Dragon Tooth Club, 156 to 468 damage. This thing was an absolute beast. I enchanted it with a new enchant called Blasting, and I still don't know to this day what that actually does. I will have to look it up for the next video, because guess what? There will be another Margo video, because the mod is just so big, it's so comprehensive, it will take a third video to cover all of the glorious aspects of this Margo mod. So I put the legend fish into a fishing pond, that is the first of many legendary fish that we are going to be breeding on our lovely Stardew Valley Margo farm. Back to the beach to try to get this palm fossil, it was a no-go. At the Ginger Island to try to get the palm fossil, it was a no-go. I did get the Deluxe Scarecrow though from getting the last rare crow I needed from that lovely Halloween event. We were now in winter and it was time to hoe up every single artifact spot that we saw in the hopes to get the palm fossil, but it just wasn't happening. We were getting everything else of course, golden coconuts, snake skulls, nautilus fossils, but weren't getting the one we needed, the palm fossil. I also did some volcano dungeon runs as well in the hopes to get some new goodies, but nothing major happened. It was time to reforge combat yet again, 50,000 gold, well spent. We're now moving on to ancient fruit, we're going to be making ancient fruit wine. The skull cavern invasion is the perfect quest to accumulate combat skill ups. Look at all of our lovely golden chickens. As we can see, all of my auto grabbers now are filled up to the top with hundreds of golden eggs. I thought I could use golden eggs to complete Gus's omelette quest, but no. He'll take any eggs except golden eggs. I finally maxed out Sam 10 out of 10. Every single Stardew Valley NPC in this game was now maxed out. 10 out of 10 hearts. I didn't have the gift NPCs anymore. I could be the introvert farmer that I was born to be. <laughs> it was back to the desert in the hopes to get the palm fossil. After looking up some information on this palm fossil, I learned that the best place to get it is in the desert. So I do visit the desert almost every single day in the hopes to hold up out of the ground. It was time to do Skull Cavern Invasion. Super lucky here, a giant slime had a galaxy soul. It's so rare to get that, but God is so satisfying to get galaxy souls of slain enemies. I'm getting lots of combat XP here from all these enemies because my weapon is so strong. These enemies don't stand much of a chance. I don't even have to blow up the mobbles when they die because the infinity weapon has a built-in ability to fell these mummies without fail. Level 5 combat we're going with Rascal, but for the level 10 perk, we're going to take the slime the piper. Attract ally slimes when they're enemies. Chance to gain a random buff when a slime is defeated. That's absolutely amazing. 
Simon Piper all the way. I was very excited to try this out as quickly as possible to see how many allied slimes I could accumulate. So I finally decided to get married, or more specifically, for Krobus to move in with me, because Krobus is the man. Krobus can also morph out of straw form to his original form and back into straw form at will, so it was great to have him around. I put this crimson fish into the second fish pond today, but I will be making more fish ponds in the future to put the rest of the legendary fish into. Back down to the beach, in the hopes to get this palm fossil, it was a no-go on the beach. And it was the usual story here, back to Ginger Island in the hopes to get it one of the bone nodes, but it wasn't happening. Back to the dungeon to see if I can get more schematics. I got dragon scale boots, but I already had those, so they were no good. I was pulling up more crab pots in the hopes to get more fishing skills. I spent the rest of the day pulling up lava eels, 1574 gold per lava eel. I was now getting gold star diamonds from these crystallariums. These are worth a ton of money. 1125 gold for each diamond. That means crystallariums are now extremely overpowered. Fished up the Iridium Crobus today because I wanted to give that to my good buddy Crobus to make him feel more at home. And we're cutting down more trees in the desert and we're looking for artifact spots at the same time. Crobus finally moved into the house. We're going to accumulate friendship points with him in the hopes to get a star drop. Golden relics are super common in the desert. I never knew that, but I know it now. They are so common. But I needed the Pam fossil. It was time to do the volcano dungeon all over again in the hopes to get more schematics. And I finally got one. A schematic finally popped up. I can give that into Clint straight away to see what kind of weapon would unlock that I could make. So we're collecting winter forageables now in the hopes to get lots of foraging skill ups again. I really wanted to get foraging up to the skill of 20 and max it out. Did the fishing event as well today. Now because I won the prizes last year, I just get 2000 gold for the event this year. I don't get the prizes that I got from last year. Level 10 foraging, this time we're going with tapper. Tappers are cheaper to craft and they will generate syrups 25% faster, not too shabby. Krobus tried to make human food today and boy did he do a great job. He made me a lucky lunch. Thanks a million Krobus, buddies for life. Let's give a good bro hug. Let's have a quick look at our ginger island farm right now. It's filled up to the top with ancient fruit. Also, we have a greenhouse filled up with ancient fruit. So, primarily now we're looking at ancient fruit wines to make money. We don't really need a whole lot of money at the moment, but it would be nice to purchase a few more items just before we get perfection. There's still a lot of expensive items left in the game that we can get our hands on. I made more crystallariums so I can get more lovely diamonds to sell to make even more money. And I'm also going to go to Robin here now, I'm going to get another fish pond to put another legendary fish into. We're going to go to Clint and we are going to get him to make a dwarven dagger. To make the dagger I needed three dwarven metals. Fortunately, I have tons of these from Dune Volcano runs over the past year and a half. The dagger itself didn't look too impressive, but it did have a very unique effect. Not unique, but weird. It had a knockback of 100%, so this dagger could potentially send enemies flying. I finally had all of the monster hunter eradication done, so I clicked on Gil there, got all my lovely rewards, including the crab shell ring, the vampire ring, the slime charmer ring and the savage ring, they're all magnificent rings and there's so many great combinations you can do with those. Because I had over 2 million gold, I decided to treat myself to a return scepter. This means I can teleport back to my farm anytime I wanted. This combined with my 4 warp obelisks, I can now get to most parts in the game within seconds. I'm just going to speed up some time here now just to show all of the lovely fruit trees that I got to harvest. And all that fruit will come in super handy later on when it comes to making recipes. Back to the desert and we're horn up more golden relics. And it was now time to get all of our lovely accumulated golden eggs. There was, must have been well over a thousand golden eggs. So I'm going to sell all this along with other bits and bobs that our lovely barn animals had accumulated. Including the rabbit foots because we didn't need to befriend villagers anymore. I made an absolute ton of money today. I also got the lava katana from an enemy inside the volcano dungeon. This is another super rare weapon because of Margomide. The lava katana has a special effect where it can burn enemies upon strike. I got the dwarven dagger back off Clint today. I decided not to use it though, but I would keep it around just to kind of add it to my weapons collection. I did have a really cool weapons collection at the moment, filled up to the top with rare, unique and powerful weapons. 
it was time to do another key quest. I just selected the one that needed more prismatic shards, because that's the easiest one for me right now, because I have so many prismatic shards. The rest of the day was spent just cutting down trees to get my forge skill up. Look at all of the lovely forgeables now. These are all winter forgeables, of course. And I'm hoping it will be enough to max out my lovely foraging before spring comes into play. I spent the rest of the day putting down new wild foraging seeds and then went back up to Ginger Island to get the rest of the ancient fruit wine to sell to make huge profits. I'm going to select Key's Hungry Challenge. The reward is 25 key gems and I'm attempting to get this pan fast. It's just not dropping. I keep getting golden relics. The night market was available, so I decided to pick up a few paintings because these are actually quite rare. You can only get them really at this event. The rest of the day was spent just getting more wines. So this is the last day of the challenge and we're going to spend it by doing a Scout Cavern run. As we can see, I'm getting great luck here with the Wapajack. All sorts of stuff are dropping for me. I also got some really nice treasures here too out of the chests. The red slime egg would sell for lots and lots of money. And because I made a flash for 100, that was more key gems for me. I kept going until the night market became available. When it did, I quickly ran down to get another painting because I didn't want to miss out on the paintings. So I got 1000 years from now painting and I hand it up inside the house. At the end of the challenge, I finally got level 15 mining. I mean, it was a no-brainer to select miner. Not plus one, but plus two ores per vein. That was a game changer. It is back to the desert, trying to get this last artifact. I got the golden mask there, but I already had that one. But it was pretty cool to get the golden mask again, because it can be quite rare. I also got the elvish jewelry, but I also had that one as well. I picked up the three trees. There's a tongue twister for you. Off the famous Lupini himself, and the next day, Krobus gives us one of the final star drops we need. One step closer to perfection. Just needed one more star drop. It finally happened. On the 18th of winter, year number two, we finally got the Pan Fossil. That completes Gunther's big side quest. All of the minerals have been found and all of the artifacts have been found. It was time to donate the last few pieces into Gunther to get those lovely rewards. With all of the artifacts donated, we can now pick up the very last star drop that we needed in order to obtain perfection. There was also a magic rock candy he had inside there as well. I don't know how long he had that for, but I picked it up straight away. It was always a use for the magic rock candy. It was then straight back down into Skull Cavern. But we didn't come here to get precious minerals and iridium ores. We came here to slay monsters for the sole purpose of increasing our combat skill up to level 20 as quickly as possible. We got it to level 10 again, so we're going to select Desperado now. We're not going to really use that though because I just don't use slingshots, period, when it comes to playing this game. I just put the glacier fish into a fishing pond there and it was time to get the workbench off Robin. This means I can craft all items now with ease because I can attach loads of chests to this workbench. I had all recipes gathered so I could craft every item now in the game. I also had an absolute mountain of minerals and resources from all of the mine runs I've been doing and the adventuring that I've been doing around Stardew Valley. I could craft all of the items in the game, no problem at all. Once all items are crafted, I got the Craft Master achievement and was one step closer to obtaining perfection. There was just a few things left to do, but before that, I wanted to try to max out all of my professions, get every single one up to level 20, just to make the most out of the Marigold mod. So, with that in mind, it was time to plant tons of winter wild seeds. I also purchased a statue of Endless Fortune here for a million gold, and I got it because I could simply afford it. I didn't really need to buy anything else with all the money I had. I was just waiting now to learn the rest of the cooking recipes and to max out my professions. It was time to go back to Robin again and get another fish pond because I wanted to put another legendary fish into that one. The rest of the day was just spent fishing to try to get my fishing skill up to 20. I really wanted to fast track my fishing skill, so I spent the rest of my money on crab pots. I purchased over 670 crab pots off Willy. I'm after making Willy's day. Willy is now an extremely rich fisherman. I spent the whole day putting down these crab pots. It took literally the whole day to do it, but it's going to pay off because I can loot these every single day to get tons of fishing XP without actually fishing. The Statue of Endless Fortune is a magnificent tool in this game to very easily accumulate friendship points because it will generate a loved gift for whoever its birthday is on the day. But today is Leah's birthday, so we could have sell it. 
I got level 15 fishing and of course I'm going to choose fisher. Bait is three times more effective when fishing. This means that when I cast into the water just like this, I get a bite within seconds. And because I've played solo mode, the game time freezes during the fishing minigame. This means I can pull up a huge amount of fish every single day. I can now make a fortune from fishing. Unfortunately, it is the end of the challenge, so there isn't much point to the whole day fishing. But I was just curious to see how much fish I could pull up today if I keep casting into water. And I do get literally hundreds of fish by doing it. It was just absolutely amazing pork. It was almost like using cheats. I got a dinosaur egg as well. I did have plenty of dinosaur eggs, but it's always nice to show that because a dinosaur egg is super rare. It was Christmas. I gave Linus a winter route. And I also got some eggs here off Mary. I was actually really happy with those 12 eggs because I actually needed those for a lot of the cooking recipes. It was now time to pick up more forageables on our lovely Margot farm. I got level 15 foraging. I had a choice now from Lumberjack upgraded. 40% more wood, but I went with Forager. 40% chance for double yield of foraged items. That is absolutely overpowered. I got level 20 fishing. Now I had a choice here. Aquarius. I could increase the capacity of fish ponds by 4, but I went with Angler. Fish are again. Note that keyword again. 0.5% more valuable for every unique max sized species caught. And I had a lot of perfect catch fish in my fishing collection. So I was now going to get a lot of money from selling my fish. It was also incredibly easy to pull up hundreds of fish as well on a daily basis. I was now the ultimate fisherman. <laughs> I spent the rest of the day just going into the Scott Caverns, wiping up monsters, trying to get my combat skill off. There's no other way around it. I did take a monster musk to dramatically decrease the spawn rate of monsters. The more monsters that spawned, the faster I was going to level up my combat. And I got loads of cool items off these monsters as well, such as pearls, coffee, pumpkins. The Wapajack Ninja was just creating chaos inside of the Skull Caverns, transforming monsters into different things all together. Two years have now passed in Stardew Valley and the lovely Grabba has visited me and he is so proud of my achievements. He is now going to give me a lovely statue of perfection. And that statue is going to generate Iridium ores every single day, which is really nice. But then going straight back into Rabbit, we're getting another fish pond now because the more of these fish ponds I have, the more legendary fish I can put into them. And it would be really nice to get a farm filled up to the top of fish ponds with loads of different legendary fish. So it was time to reforge our lovely ginger island farm and I was putting forages down here just so I could fast track my forages to get up to 20. These were all winter foraging seeds. Then it was straight back down into the skull cavern, spent monsters to try to max out my combat skill. At the end of the day I got level 15 combat. It was time to power up some perks. I wasn't going to go with rascal because I wasn't using the slingshot. The fighter was a no-brainer. From 10% to 15% damage output I selected that straight away. I also got level 20 mining. The Spiloku was pretty cool. Restores some health and energy with every mine level. But I went with Prospector. That was totally overpowered, game breaking perk. Time freezes during Prospector hunts. That means any floor I get and the Prospector skill activates, time goes still. That means I could get every single resource on those floors without spending a single in game second totally overpowered pork altogether. The next day it was just spent primarily foraging, picking up forageables, getting up my foraging skill. The next day, to my great surprise, these diamonds weren't gold star diamonds anymore, they were iridium star diamonds. Each one sold for 1500 gold. That is just absolutely amazing. It was also time to throw more legendary fish into these lovely fish ponds. So I now have all the fish ponds filled up with all the legendary fish. Five of them in total, so I was really happy about that. I then went to the volcano dungeon. I was trying so hard to get another dwarven blueprint to give to Clint, but luck just wasn't on my side. All of the forageables were finally ready to be collected on our ginger island farm, so I'm going to pick up all these now in the hopes to max out my foraging skill. I didn't max it out today, but I got very close, so I'm just going to make more winter wild seeds. Put those back on the ginger island farm and rinse and repeat until my foraging skill is maxed out. So this is probably the best way to go about it. Back into the volcano, I got the deluxe pirate hat. 
That is actually a very rare item to get, but I just really wanted another Dwarven schematic. Didn't look like I was going to get one though, unfortunately. The next day it was back into Skull Cavern to try to finish off my combat. So I was just spending more slime today and anything in between. But I also got some really cool items too from these enemies. I got things like prismatic shards, diamonds, but I also got weird items as well, such as weeds and blocks and things that you normally can't get in the game because of the weapon jack enchant. But I also got another item here called an elder wood. Now I imagine this item somewhat relates to the forge ability that Clint has. So I'm wondering now, is that item needed to make some sort of a, a dwarvish or a dragon or some sort of a, another weapon that we just haven't come across yet in Stardew Valley? I finally got level 20 combat. Happy days. I had a choice now between brute and bushwhacker upgrades. I was going to go with brute. Rage also grants attack speed. That was an absolute no-brainer right there. I was going to pick the brute enchant. This will dramatically increase my offensive capabilities. God bless any sort of monster I come up against in the future that won't stand a chance. I also got rid of all of the ancient fruit of my greenhouse. And I replaced it with winter forgeables. Once all the forgeables had been collected, it was an opportunity to put down all of the trees that got fully grown. It was then back into the volcano for another go at the chests to see if we could get some sort of a blueprint. But it was a no-go. It was another ostrich egg. I had about 10 of those now at the moment. It was finally time to craft all the cooking recipes in the game. And I have actually crafted most of them. All that was left was the lucky lunch. And I got the gourmet chef achievement there. So I now technically had perfection achieved in the game. Which was really nice. And here is just a few screens here of all of the recipes that I made and sold. Just to show you what some of the recipes actually go for. Pizza, surprisingly enough. It's for 300 gold a pop, which is pretty cool. Cheese cauliflower. It's for 300 gold a pop as well, which was nice. The fiddlehead risotto is a very nice recipe. 350 gold. The fruit salad. 450 gold. The tropical curry. 500 gold. So there are some really nice recipes that you can get your hands on in this game and that you can sell to make some pretty nice profits. So I just maxed out my foraging skill now today. I was really happy about that. All my skills are now level 20. It did take an absolute huge amount of grinding because these skills had to be reforged so many times. Each skill had to be reforged four times so I could unlock all of the perks in each profession. But it was definitely worth it. It was now time to ascend up to the summit to look at the lovely achievement of perfection we've gotten on this game. It was an absolute magnificent journey playing through the Marigold mod, it overhauled so many in-game mechanics, it felt like playing a whole new game and I got really excited during certain aspects of the game, especially with the professions. It did take me a while to figure out some of the things with the Marigold mod and I won't lie to you, occasionally I did have to go into GitHub and I had to look at the notes to find out what to do with some of the new mechanics of the game, especially when it comes to getting some of the Iridium Galaxy weapons or when it comes to completing some of the quests, I had to go and find help. <laughs> so a lot of people have been wondering, are the straw portraits part of the Marigold mod? They are not. They are a separate mod and all mods are in the description of this video. Now we're coming to the end of this video, but we're not totally finished just yet. There are a few more things I want to do before I actually wrap this video up. So I'm just going to show a little bit of the end side here when you get perfection. Basically, it just goes through a huge film like this where it shows you more or less every single thing inside Stardew Valley, from the fish to the artifacts and everything in between. So when I got level 20 foraging, I had a choice between scavenger and ecologist. Scavenger was a no-brainer. Time freezes during scavenger hunts. That is absolutely insane. That means if you go into any sort of location in Stardew Valley and there's a scavenger on, time won't move. So we picked up our lovely statue of true perfection and there is the perfection tracker. 100% everything shipped, all the ablets, the gold clock, monster slayer hero, good friends with everyone, max out the farming level, all the golden walnuts, all the recipes crafted, all the cooking recipes made. What an achievement indeed. I also spoke to a monkey here at the summit of the volcano and he gave me a special mask. It's such a funny mask. The concerned ape mask. And it's not really a mask I wear, but you know what, because of the occasion, I said let's just throw it on and have a bit of fun. So we're finally at the end of our video. If you've enjoyed this movie, 
I would really appreciate if you could like the video. It really helps me out because the algorithm will recommend this video to more people based on likes. I hope you all have a great day. And make sure to watch my other 100 day Stardew Valley challenges and also my Stardew Valley movies. My channel is packed up to the top with those so if you like long form content, you'll absolutely love my channel. Thanks again for watching and I hope you all have a magnificent day and a magnificent week. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.